Oh yeah, it's the Drum Brigade Podcast coming at ya! <laughs> Show 23! Yes! Oh yeah! Yes, sir. I caught you off guard, Phil. I told you Did. I wasn't ready for this show, and I came in hot. Coming in swinging. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I'm Corey Kingston Horn, sitting across from me in the beat locker in beautiful San Diego, California, drinking coffee, eating pumpkin seeds that are burnt to a crisp. They're not that bad. I like them. <laughs> My wife tried to make pumpkin seeds, and they're burnt. I think she succeeded. All right. I like Tell her that. Coming in with a fresh loaf of bread, still hot out of the oven. It's the baker. It's a candlestick maker. <laughs> I never made candlesticks. <laughs> He's a bread maker, and he is fantastic. He is funky. Phil Pardale. What's up, funky Phil? Woo! Producing the show, holding it down, eating pumpkin seeds, drinking coffee, baking bread. Life's good. Changing diapers, playing drums, mm-hmm. playing freaking percussion. Yeah, this dude's a jack of all trades. You're a jack of all trades. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's show 23. We're just pumping them out. I'm getting sick and tired of this show, to be honest. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just want it to grow. That's all, Phil. I just want it to grow. I don't want to put negative energy out there. So I, I contacted a consultant. We might have a call later today. Ooh. I'm just saying. I mean, we're, we sh- you guys aren't helping, so we got to help ourselves. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You guys are helping. You guys are helping. I shouldn't start off so negative all the time. No. Gosh, I always get on one about the show. You know? Yeah. Um, All right. This is going to be a really, really good show. Oh, yeah. Jeff Endike approved. There goes a wreck my career. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) All right. Drum Brigade. It's a Drum Brigade podcast. Okay. First of all, you can listen to this on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, TuneIn, YouTube, uh, I think that's it. Drumbrigade.com <laughs> and soon to be Spotify. I didn't get to it, Dang it last week, but I will. It's on my list. It's top of my list today. Wow. Because I don't have a gig tonight. All I want to do is go on a bike ride. Do it. And change some drum heads, maybe. Yes. And that's it. So I'm going to try to get the show on Spotify today. Oh, man. I can't wait. You might be able to listen to show 23 on Spotify. If you don't, you're a loser. Just kidding. Uh, Drum Brigade web show, not going to talk about that because you already know the deal. Uh, but you can subscribe to the Drum Brigade YouTube page, the Drum Brigade Instagram, and you can also visit drumbrigade.com for everything Drum Brigade. You can also visit coreykingston.com, philpardell.com, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube pages, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want. We're here for you. Uh, I have a cool, um, vlog called a day in the life of a drummer. Uh, you follow me around on gigs. I have some lesson videos. I have some product reviews. I have all kinds of stuff on my YouTube page. Funky Phil has lessons. He has product reviews. He has play alongs. He has all kinds of stuff on his website and on his YouTube page. So hit subscribe, follow us telling you you're gonna love it you're just like we're here for you we love you guys are gonna love us <laughs> <laughs> uh drum brigade is a community it's a family it's a place for drummers drum enthusiasts future drummers and people who are just playing into music and culture to be among like-minded individuals drum brigade is a way to support each other as fellow drummers also a means to push each other to expel excel and expand (laughs) on horizons in a spirit of camaraderie rather than negative competition we have products we host events not this year at nam though funky phil (laughs) nope sorry y'all not this year we don't feel like doing it well we're gonna be busy doing uh yeah we're gonna be working going around getting cool interviews and yeah checking out products video style we just want to go to events we don't really want to like host an event this year sorry if you're planning on coming to it uh we have educational stuff lessons videos t-shirts stickers sticks sheds community events all kinds of things the drum brigade is the brotherhood of drums so funky phil are you part of the brotherhood of drums know it oh yeah are you ready to get into this show yes all right let's do it 
should be a video show sometimes our like our signs and signals and dance moves to like our drops are pretty funny i guess you'll see them like when we do our web show if we do our oh, web we're show. doing it oh we're doing we're it doing we can it. do it anytime we just you know oh so funky phil mm -hmm. how's it going it's awesome how's the baby he is very chubby and adorable chubby oh yeah, yeah. he's, he's a starting hungry little fella he's starting to have a personality i can see he's, he's only like a little like he's only a few weeks old yeah seven 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 weeks, weeks. Now. and yeah. now he's starting to become a little human yeah he's starting <laughs> to be more aware yeah look at stuff and laugh we had a little smile laugh session this oh morning. cool yeah dang you phil it's a good way to start the day <sighs> maybe i want to have one <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other stuff, too. <laughs> I was watching a show, and then she's like, all right, well, I'm just going to like go and do whatever the heck I want to do right now. And then they're like, huh? And she's like, because I don't have any children. See you later. <laughs> My tip yeah, <laughs> That's pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely lose all that when you have kids. Oh, but, man, I am, if I'm being honest with the whole world out there right now, there's a lot of background noise going on. If I'm being honest with the whole world right now, I would be 100% cool if my wife was like, babe, we got to talk. And yeah. then was like, we're pregnant. I would be like, I'd run through the wall with excitement. What? You hear that, Summer? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not man enough to be like, okay, no, let's try to have kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like maybe you shouldn't have kids yeah <laughs> but then i see i like see little kids or i like hold a little baby and i'm just like oh man oh man maybe i want one i don't know yeah. but if i'm like if i don't know like i know i want to play masters of maple drums i know this <laughs> you know but if i was like oh, i don't know you yeah. know, like I know that I wanted a 20, 21 inch special dry ride. I know that. Yeah. But if I was like, oh man, I played your ride and it's so cute and maybe I want one. No, I don't know. Maybe it's just not for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you have to be okay with the unknown. But and, see, this and is not the thing. knowing how things are going to change and how will, everything will turn out. And Yeah. Sometimes, see, like I'm. You got to really want. But then sometimes you're pleasantly surprised. Like, like I didn't know for sure that I wanted to play like an Aquarian response to on my 14 inch snare drum. But then when I did, I was like, that's my new snare drum head. Nice. So I didn't know, but now I know. So maybe I do want a kid and I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love this. I like I you know equating, when I got kittens kids to dress. <laughs> <laughs> I like I wish I could research it. Like I re I wish I could like research like what my kid would be like, what he would grow up to be, what he'd be into and then be like, "Okay, no, this is the one I want to go with." <laughs> Yeah, I'm going with him. <laughs> like when I got my He's bicycle got all the right stats. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. If yeah, I, I knew he wasn't going to be like, you know, have problems like you never know what you're gonna get to gamble. Yeah. Like I like when I did research on like a Mazda three, I was like, "There's no other car in this world that I want that's in my price range." This is the car I'm going with because I did the research. I watched videos and stuff. I yeah. can't do that with a kid. Well, it's kind of like rather than think of it as buying equipment, <laughs> it's like it's like you're making equipment. Okay. So, so you're gonna love like, it even more. Yeah, and you are making it. You know how you think uh, the equipment should See, be. But I'm not good at making things, <laughs> Phil. Like you <laughs> make so bread, exactly. and you make like you make things. You made like you restored your Congos, <laughs> 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 and like you, Felix is like a good looking kid. You know, he's like a good kid. He's funny. Like you're good at making stuff. I'm not that good at making things. I don't know about that, Corey. I mean, like I can make like a quesadilla. <laughs> it's okay, but it's not like wow. Like, you know, like, I don't know, like, 
I can make a website. It's okay, but it's a template. It's like already built in, you know? <laughs> I don't know what like what are some other things I could make like I guess I made those bike racks that are hanging up on the walls those are like I feel like I did pretty good on those you're taking it too literal <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like we would probably have a pretty cool kid me and summer yeah you would but like you're both really good looking too really so, you think yeah. so thanks you would be, you would be so cute I could, I'd oh, puke in my man. mouth every time I saw it <laughs> I'm sure but you know man but there's a lot of problems in this world dude commitment um there's a lot of problems in this world man like that's what scares us that's what scares us like yeah well i always say the world needs more good people yeah so good people need to have kids i guess i guess because there's a lot of i'm not so good out there right yeah there's too many but like I guess what I'm saying is, like, I think Summer, well, I'm far away. Okay, I think Summer and I are good people. Uh, but, you know, like, I have my moments. Like, I, like, there's sometimes we got to edit stuff out of the show because I'm like, <laughs> no, nah, I shouldn't have said that. I don't want to offend anybody. There are some times where, like, my soapbox goes a little too far. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it's, a le- you, you know, having, having kids, you learn a lot about yourself, too. Oh, man. You know. It makes it inspires you to try to be the best you you can be. I'll tell you the the biggest thing. It's not like oh man, my kid got in trouble, or like oh man, like I, maybe like I don't know, like I I wasn't there as much as I should have been. I don't think that's any that's not going to be a problem. I don't think we'll like have trouble raising him, like you know, like or her. Uh, the biggest problem that I have, the biggest hang up I have with having a kid is two things. One, I love getting sleep. <laughs> I yeah. don't want to be woken up. Oh, yeah. Get rid of that. And so, yeah, I was furious this morning because my cat started meowing at my door at 7 in the morning like a little baby. Oh. Like, please let me in. Please. I, I'm so cold out here. And I'm just like, oh, shut up. Stop meowing. And I love my cat. But, like, no. Stop. I need sleep. And two, like, what if it comes out like with problems oh yeah well <laughs> i don't i mean that's you just uh, you just deal with it. it right yeah but our my kid would come out with problems why because it's me so i don't know man it's hard work dude we took <laughs> my wife used to be a caregiver and i used to be a caregiver it's hard work man <laughs> 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 well anyway maybe we should move on <laughs> we could go in circles on this one. you can't deny that it is okay all right let's move on all right uh <laughs> well i'm still even after this conversation i'm still like i don't know maybe huh? i feel like okay like i feel like i'm 50 percent now i'm good and then no i'm 49 percent I feel like I'm 51% like, oh man, I would like to have a kid. And then I'm 49, no, 50 and a half percent. I'm slightly leaning towards like, oh man, I'm getting older and like, maybe I do want one. Like I'm getting to the point where I see little babies and I'm like, oh man, that's a cute little baby. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want one. Yeah. Oh man. I don't know, Phil. Yeah, I don't know. See, this is why it's not a good time. But then I don't have much time left. Well, you got plenty of time. I got plenty of time. My wife is running out of time, dude. It might not even happen now. But, you know, these days the the doctors are pretty good. They can do a lot of stuff. My wife and her brother are 18 years apart, and it's only them two. Wow. Like, she was 18. I remember when her mom was pregnant. She was 18 years old. Her parents were basically done. They had an adult as a kid and started 100% over. That's brutal. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm sure it's cool, but yeah. also, I, yeah, I could imagine being like, all right. Yeah. Now we can just, it's, we'll be back to the two of us and we can do just stuff yep. we want to do. She's like ba- basically Retirement almost ready. Yeah. yeah. Ready to, and they were like still like pretty young, you know, like not that they're old now, but yeah it's like it's crazy but i don't know 
it's yeah and so like when we were dating they thought that that was our kid like they're like oh is this your son or is this your wife's son or i'm like no it's her brother <laughs> he's like he was like seven years old when we got married oh man <laughs> now he's like a 21 year old 22 year old adult he's drinking beer Dang. he's got muscles he's got muscles <laughs> <laughs> i know that's the trippy thing i'm like imagining my kids there yeah i just cannot picture it i can't picture him as an adult yet yeah no no you shouldn't i wouldn't even want to think about that <laughs> see this is the thing too like right now felix like i like babies and i like toddlers and then i like the age that felix is at right now until like eight yeah yeah it's it's awesome it's and the, so the whole funny sleep man. thing is like a i mean at when they're when they're babies it's you don't you you definitely lose a lot of sleep but yeah you know, Felix sleeps all night. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't... Huh. That's funny, man. He's he's so funny. He's so funny. <laughs> but it's like, you know, like, you know, when you, like, have students that are, like, young, you know, seven, like, s- six, seven, eight-year-old little girls are so funny, man. They're so funny because they're, like, they're not, like, they're, like, when they get to, like, 10, 11, 12, 13, then they're, like, the preteen they oh, kind yes. of are aware of like ill boys and like that kind of stuff, but they're still kind of funny. Yeah, a lot of hormones and emotions yeah. change. And then 13, like 14, 15, maybe not 15, like 12, no, 11, 12, 13, 14. I normally have like a funny banter with like, like girls. Like they're like, I don't know. It's like we're joking around and, but I, I don't always know what's going on because I'm like, you know, like I don't know what kids are into. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And then little boys are like funny. They're just like, I don't know. You just like, you can make the same jokes that you make with your buddies, like fart jokes and stuff. And they just think it's hilarious. It is true. <laughs> There's a lot of that in my house. <laughs> if you got two boys, man, you're going to have to just, it's going to be, oh, it's, it's, yeah, I'm it's going to be, sorry, Charlotte. It's going to be a comedy <laughs> fest like every day. <laughs> this, this is the things that I want. This is the reason why I want yeah. kids like I, fart jokes. Felix and, is definitely super good at making sound effects. Oh too. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's pretty advanced, oh, I'd man. say. I love when I come over to your house and like it's the same thing with one of our other friends with Kevin. Um when I go over to their house, they his son thinks I'm there for him, not for his dad. Oh, yeah. And so <laughs> it's like, like, okay, come here, I want to show you my new toys. I'm like, all right, let's go. Like, let's check this out. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what does this one do? Oh, it's like it's like this. And we're just like hanging out. Like I have to like devote some time to like hang out with my buddy, like you know, and it's like, <laughs> wait, you, what do you mean you want to go like hang out with my dad? Like, well, I thought you were here for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And he's still, I mean, he still is like waiting for that invite to come over ah, to your house man. and play with your cat, dude. We got to make this happen. <laughs> I feel so bad. Like we, you know, it's the same situation. Like we don't have kids, and it's like, you know, I forget that kids are like, he said that I could come over. Why hasn't? I, why haven't I come over yet? Like what the heck? <laughs> Does he even have cats anymore? <laughs> like, you know, um, um, it's cool. Yeah, we got it. We, we, we never even had Charlotte over the house. Oh, yeah. Gosh, we're such losers. You guys have us over for dinner. You guys like bake us bread. You just you have to eat some today. We're such losers. Came out of the oven. Yeah, I'm going to eat some af- as soon as the show is done. OK. All right. Uh, let's talk about gigs. Let's talk about your week. Yeah. How was your week? It was good. It was pretty mellow. I had a photo shoot. Whoa, big time. I had um I did a video <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, photo shoot and a video production session I do for a company that I shall not name because <laughs> I'm not officially affiliated with them. Well, look, look, wait, 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 wait. We can talk we can talk about other com Oh, you did a video. Never mind. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> sorry, so I did sorry. some videos and then uh, I mean, some gigs. I'm not you know? going to buy them. <laughs> I'm not going to buy them. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, so anyways, yeah, you yeah. did some videos for you do you do video drum videos as a headless drummer. <laughs> yes, I do product demos. Yes. And it's a paid gig. But you yeah. do it for a competing company. It's work for hire. Yes, it's work for hire, and yeah. and it's fine. That's totally cool because mm-hmm. no one knows it's you, and I don't think the vessel would really care. No, he's he's like the coolest ever. Oh boy, yeah. What does Give this? Give me that bell. Wait. 
gosh, <laughs> got to work through these these samples or whatever they're called. Uh, don't watch me too carefully, all right? I'm still working on it myself. Um, yeah, do you ever do photo shoots, though? Yeah, all the time. I always feel like such an idiot. <laughs> you got to just have your move. I don't my have my a wife move. knows my move. What's like, your move? Like, she's like, oh, here we go. There's the move for, like, I used to always have the same move in AgriLite photos. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I'll have to do it. You have to see it. But then. Do one pose. There's one pose that I have for AgriLites, or maybe, like, one or two. And then there's, like, my usual, like, pose for other bands. Mm -hmm. But it's probably kind of dumb. You feel dumb doing it, but whatever. Um... Yeah, I need to do photo shoot for Shuffle and Bang really, really, really bad, and a video shoot. I have a video idea that I want to do, um, so I got to work on that. Um, this week, oh, I went to the Aquarian Drum like artist party. Woo! We got some good news for you, Funky Phil. Yeah? You're going to be, in the near weeks, Funky Phil is going to be an Aquarian artist. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. They, I was, like, talking to some fools, like, about coming on the show. And one of the guys that works there is like, I would love to. He's like, it's with Funky Phil, right? And I'm like, you do know Funky Phil. <laughs> and, like, he's like, yeah, man, tell him to call me. We got to get him sorted. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm like, he's already sorted. His whole kit is complete. I'm already with Aquarian outfitted. Drum yeah. I even got those, like, silent pad things. Yep. I love those. Yeah. But it's going to be official. Picture on the website. Dude, oh, that is so, artist parties. so freaking excited yeah. about that. Oh, yeah. So that was dope. The Aquarian artist party. I wish you would have went. But... I wish I could have gone. You, I saw it. You sent, you sent me a clip of Eric Moore. Yeah. And who is the other guy? I don't know. Don't know him. Just ripping. They were like shedding. Melting faces in there. Yeah. Eric Moore was wearing like five or six hundred dollar Air Jordans. <laughs> I didn't even know those ex <laughs> that existed. Yeah. Super. Like they were like. The basketball shoes that cost that much? Oh, dude, there's that's like kind of on the low side for like what they are. Are they made out of gold? Like real gold? Maybe. I, maybe he has some. Like, I don't know. Like, I think he's like a shoe collector. And he, he, he every time I've ever seen him, he's wearing these like super high end, like weird, like one off or like limited edition Air Jordans and stuff. And uh, they look pretty nice. They look pretty nice. They were like suede and like purple or something. Nice. <laughs> they still had the price tags on them. <laughs> but. Okay, so those are not technically drum shoes. No, but man, if if they make me play that They're fast. They're sporty though. They are sporty. <laughs> they are sporty. I don't picture him dunking anytime soon, but <laughs> it's like every time he plays drums is like a slam dunk, you know. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh didn't talk to him. Um you know, because I don't know him. Yeah. And I'm not the kind of guy to go, "Man, you're freaking amazing. Oh my gosh." So I was just like, huh, let me get some footage and like be like, wow, that was a dope lick. Man, those are nice shoes. All right, later. And that's what I did. <laughs> that was your that was your experience of the party? Yeah. So many great drummers there. Um Jimmy Ford, do you know who Jimmy Ford is? I don't think so. He's an incredible jazz drummer. Like oh, really? incredible jazz drummer. He makes he makes Ford drums. I don't know oh, if he still does. I've seen those. Those yeah. look nice. Nice drums. Yeah. yeah. And, and like really dope th drum thrones too like custom drum thrones. Oh, snap. Uh, Jimmy Ford is like a great, like he's kind of a mentor of mine. Uh, he's an incredible drummer. Man, I can't even tell you. Like he's he's the closest thing I've ever seen to Buddy Rich. Really? Like super nice guy, super dope, really great teacher, like really dope dude. He plays at Disneyland too. Uh, nice. There's just a ton of fools there, man. Ton of, ton of dudes, like bunch of friends, buddies like that I haven't seen in a little while. Um, Nat Scott, is like another like he's like a brand ambassador and like a really great drummer too. He's um he's like another like uncle like drum uncle <laughs> nice. mentor guy of me of mine. Um yeah, some other dudes. Just it was cool, man. It was just a cool hang. Free gifts. They gave gave like a free t shirt and like um what? like some drum dampeners and stuff. So this was a party for the honor of Roy Burns. Roy Burns. Yeah. So like it was like his birthday would have been like I think that Friday. Okay. And so they like kind of got together and did an artist appreciation and partner like appreciation thing. 
and also a memorial like celebration kind of party for Roy Burns. So his wife was there. Um, and it was like, it was everything that we like about Nam show, like the hang mm -hmm. there's like, excuse me, a little bit of shedding, a little bit of like partying, like not partying, but just guys hanging out, you know, and eating tacos. Sweet. <laughs> It was all that, except without the stupid nonsense of of Nam Show. It was like only for us, you know. It was like and for Roy. Mm -hmm. So it was like you could just go and hang out with all the boys and like and high five each other, and it was dope. That's awesome. And then it was also dope because they were like, and if you want to get some things, talk to Gabe, and Gabe is like the guy that will get you all your stuff sorted. And so there was a line behind his computer of ev like everybody there was like, Oh yeah, I need to get a few things. And so of course <laughs> everybody was walking out with a stack of <laughs> drum heads. And so I, um, I finally got a drum head for every drum top and bottom. Yes. Yeah. And my odory kit. I got new drum heads. Oh, thank yeah. goodness. Yeah. Finally. That's rad. Um, so now all my drums are outfitted with Aquarian heads. Thank goodness. Gosh, I haven't played them yet though. So. Wait, what? All right. Before we get into the tech stuff, I know you've, because Roy was like a pretty amazing guy, right? Yeah. And um, you've, Great met, drummer you've too. met him before. Yeah. And like, I don't know if you want to tell any stories about him. I don't. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to talk about that too. Thanks for reminding me. Um, so I was, I was talking to Chris Brady over there too about this. Like he said, not many of the drummers that are on their ro artist roster got to experience this but like a lot of the SoCal guys did. And he's like, so you're one of the only ones. You're a fortunate one. What he was just, what I was telling him is like what I appreciated so much. This was like early on when I, when I jumped on like as a, a artist for Aquarian, I was like, I, I, this is how, like how much I knew about Aquarian. I didn't really know anything cause I played Evans for like my, my whole life basically. Yeah. And so I didn't know, their whole education aspect. I didn't know their like, I didn't know anything about their heads. And so they like floated me a couple heads, like actually outfitted my whole kit with heads so I can test them out. And I fell in love right away. Anyways, long story short, I was in the, the back room with like testing some heads and I was like noticing a bunch of pictures of Roy Burns. And I was like, Oh, that's dope, man. Roy Burns. I'm like, I grew up, you know, with my nose in his books, like my teacher would always have me like learning from his books and they're like, Oh, you don't, have you ever met him before? And I'm like, no, I'm like, that's crazy though. That he works here. They're like, he owns it. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, Oh, that's crazy. I didn't know that. And like, they're like, yeah. And they're like, well, come on inside and like, say hello, like sit at his desk. And I'm like, Oh, I couldn't do that. And they're like, no, he loves it. Like, go to his desk and hang out. And so they're like, hey, Roy, this is Corey. He has like a drum school and he's a teacher. And he's like, oh, hey, how's it going? Come on in. I sit at his desk in his office. And he's like, so you're a teacher, huh? And he's like, what do you teach? And I'm just like, well, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I'm like, I was just kind of looking to pick up a few pointers from one of the greats, you know? And then he's like, all right, have a seat. And I'm like, okay. I'm like shaking, like kind of nervous. <laughs> he's like, here's some sticks. He's like, let me show you a few things. He's like, play a paradiddle. And I'm like, okay, a paradiddle and play a paradiddle. I'm like playing a paradiddle literally like on a magazine on his desk. Yes. And he's like, um, you know, I had a drummer come to me and ask me how to play a funk groove. And he's like, you know, my, my background's in big band and jazz, but you know, so he wanted to learn a funk groove. He's like, so uh like he's like play the accent on uh one and a two like on two and four like play a 16th note paradiddle play it on two and four so i did it play the accent on two and four and he's like there's a funk beat now you can just play those as ghost notes and he, i'm like oh yeah that's cool like i've you know i've heard that one before but it was just cool coming from him yeah and then um and then he's like, he just, he just gave me some dope pointers. Like one, like was like, you know, I always taught my students. There's only three rudiments that you need to know. And he's like one, uh, singles, two doubles and three, a buzz roll. And he's like, you know, those three rudiments, you can play any rudiment in the book. And I'm just like, mine exploded. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that's cool. I never thought about that. Like that was, like, it was just really funny the way like that's he simplified so it. And like, he gave me one of his CDs and it was like, I expected it to be like, you know, 
just like a big band thing. Dude, it was like super crazy. It was like really? odd times. Like it was big band, but it was like odd times, all these drum solos. And I'm just like this dude. And it was just like, it was cool to like, look like that's something that's always st- stayed with me. Like it's stuck with me. And, um, I've passed that on to like, you know, the stuff that he was showing me that day, like, um, to some of my students and used him as an example. And like, I just thought that was really cool. And so now that he's gone, I'm like, man, I'm so like stoked that I got to experience that. And like, I'm so stoked that I got to like sit at his desk and take a free private, like basically private lesson at his desk, the owner of a company, you know, who I'm like honored and flattered to use their equipment and like to be one of their artists and yeah, just go to his desk and like, you know, learn something. It's that's, that's, that's like, that's priceless. So that's priceless, you know? And so he's like, Chris was like, yeah, man, that's like, you know, a lot of all of the like SoCal guys would come here and just hang out with them and do that all the time. And I'm just like, man, he's like, you're one of the fortunate ones, you know, that got to experience that a lot of guys, you know, a lot of our artists don't or didn't get to experience that. And so I'm just like, man, when I was there, I was like, no, I, I, I couldn't do that. You know, I'm kind of shy. And they're like, they like forced me. They're like, no, go sit at his desk, you know? And I did. And it was like, now I can like keep that with me forever. It was dope. That's so rad. So Aquarian is like, I mean, I'm kind of biased, you know, but like <laughs> it is a really great company, man. It's really cool. It's not like a huge, ma- you know, massive company where you're just a number. It's kind of like still family oriented. And like when you go there, they know you, they don't like go like, Hey, can I help you? It's kind of like, Hey, Corey, what's up, man? How's it going? Like, what are you doing down here? You know, like, uh, you call, you email them or call them and say, Hey, can I get a few things? It's like already pulled and waiting for you when you get there or they can ship it to you. It's that's so rad. It's a great company and their like products are super dope. I mean, okay. So I ended up getting the wrong heads. I got clear heads and I wanted coated heads, but I didn't check them before I left. Um, and I didn't specify. I just go, yeah, I want the response to this size, this size, this size, whatever. And they gave them to me all in clear. So I went back down there on Friday and I just kind of was, I called ahead, but I was just like, Hey, I just wanted to swap these out. If that's cool. And they're like, Oh yeah. Chris is like, yeah, man, come on back. Takes me in the warehouse. We like swap them out. We start talking. Then we go into the drum room and we just like hang out, man. Like we just like, he shuts the door and it's just like me and him just chilling out talking for like a half an hour, just like, or more just chatting about, whatever we want, like just drums, drummers, the party, our show, like everything. And it's like, that to me is a big deal. Like, cause I'm, I'm going to play Aquarian heads now, like whether I pay full price for them or not. Yeah. That's just like, they're, uh, it's a quality product, but like as an artist to get that kind of treatment is like, that's, that's what matters to me. Like the relationships that you form with these companies I'm not, you know, we're not like collecting endorsements just to be cool. Like, yeah. And so they really go the extra mile. Like their artist relations, their artist program is really dope. They got a ton of drummers, but they're still really personal, like personable. And, um, that goes a long way with me. Yeah. That's that's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. They make, I mean, you know, I've been a fan of theirs for a long time. I wasn't always, man. I was diehard like diehard Evans. I always would just only use Evans and I'm not saying that that's a bad product. I'm no, not they saying make good stuff too. They make good stuff too, but, um, it's, it was different for me. It was difficult for me to learn a new product, you know, learn, but I mean, I don't know everything about Evans either. I just know what I like. Yeah. Um, and, and for, for me, the proof is in the product, man. Like I, I put them on, I put them on my acrylic kit. I put some, um, performance twos on my acrylic kit or force tens, I think. And it was just like complete night and day difference. Just completely warmed them up, made them, made them feel like wood kit, a wood kit. Nice. So, um, yeah, I got kind of a weird lineup. I got like response twos for the 10 and 12 rack. And then I got force tens for the (laughs) floors. Whoa. Yeah. And then I got super kick two, super kick 10 for the kick drum. So is response to is like the general two ply. Yeah. There's response to and performance to um, response to is like kind of like a Remo 
what's it called? Ambassador? No, Ambassador is single. Okay, so, so then it's... I guess it's like... An, I don't know. It's two... I'm looking at their site now. It's two seven mil plies. It's two seven mil plies. So like an uh, Evans G2, I think, is two five mil? I don't think I, so. No? No. I don't know anything. That's really thin. So then it's 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 the closest thing for me to like an Evans G2. I don't know. Nice. It's what I like. It's what I normally use on my snare drum. I used to only use G2s on my snare drum, like for the ska stuff. And then I put a response to on my snare and it's just a glorious, versatile, like versatile. It's ringy. If you want it to be, it's like loosens up really well. It tightens up really well. It's a, it's like a great all arounds uh, thing. If you want all around head, if you want like a warm sound, like more like rounded, I guess I, I could, I would say I would use the force 10, like low, lower. The response is not as like sensitive. Yeah, those are two ten plies. Two ten plies, yeah. So I want my floor toms to be lower pitched and like Yeah, okay. So the seven yeah, it's the G two is two seven mil plies. So yeah. it's like the same Yeah, that's the equivalent. Right. So that's cool. What'd yeah. you get for your snare? Um I just got two res- I got response to. So I should be getting um Oh cool. The trash talk snare soon. Hoping. Oh man! I don't Can't know when. I don't know when my date is to get it, but um, so I'm gonna throw a response to on there, and then go from there. So you got a for the kick. You got a super kick ten ten coated. Don't throw up, Phil. No, it's cool. They're good. <laughs> it's, it's. I don't know if I'm gonna like it, but that was what was recommended. So yeah, that's two. That's like the same thing as that's like what. It's two ten mil plies. Yeah, for that one, plus with, a muffling with ring. A muffling ring. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were like trying to tell me to not have anything in my kick drum and put a felt strip on the resonant head. Yeah, but I don't. I didn't do that. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm just gonna hear how it sounds. I just need a versatile kick drum. Versatile. I can play a pop gig. I can play a ska gig. That's it. And then, yeah, I want to get that. I want to get that kick drum. Oh my gosh, I want to get a little skinny. I want an eighteen <laughs> by twelve, Phil. That's what I did want. You, did you order it yet? Or an eighteen by thirteen? I didn't order it yet. I think that's probably why Sahir was calling me. Oh, oh, I want that thing so bad. So I use the Super Twos on my toms. Super Twos. Super Twos. I've never even heard of that. They're awesome. I love. Are them. they single plies? No, they're, they're double twos. ply, but it's a five mil and a seven mil. Oh, so it's kind of somewhere between a two ply head and a single ply. Yeah, so you can kind of that's when very versatile. Yeah, it's super versatile. I love it. You okay. can crank them up, and they don't sound exactly like a single ply, but it's closer than like a normal yeah. double ply. Oh, I got the modern vintage two for the odory kit. Ooh, I can't wait to play those things haven't even played i haven't even put on the heads on my my real kit i just put the odory kit heads on Whew. yeah did you you didn't play them yet though no mm. i i want to play them but i have nowhere to play them funky phil dang it yeah you ready to get on a soapbox oh boy let's do it trying to hear that right now (laughs) all right my soapbox this week (laughs) is from a gig i played i can't give too much details but if you think i'm talking about you just assume that i'm not Uh (laughs) uh-oh all right all right now that we got that out of the way this soapbox is entitled the corporate hit Ooh, yeah Uh, let me let me break this down for you funky phil (laughs) and people what's up uh okay so i played a gig Normal gig, just a normal gig. Um, The people at this gig tell us, hey, tonight we just want you to come in an hour later. But that's all the information they give us. We Mm -hmm. want you to come in an hour later. So we're like, all right, cool. Does that mean we still stop at the same time? No, they are like, we just want you to play from 7 to 11, not 6 to 10. All right, cool. Well, normally on the weekends, that's our normal pay. I mean, that's our normal time. But we get paid extra for that. But they didn't really adjust that for us. They're just like, no, just come in an hour later. It's cool. So we're like, all right, that's cool. We'll just come in an hour later. Well, we get there. 
I think like there was an email sent, but it was very like, it wasn't very clear. So they basically said, yeah, somebody's bought out the restaurant. Um, so we just need you to come in an hour later. Okay. Well, huh. what they were tr- failing to like fill us in on is that it was like a corporate party for this, like held at this restaurant. So you were playing at a public venue. Yes. Okay, let me and let they me push your your normal start time back back by an, an hour. hour, but they still wanted you to play the same duration. Yes. But they didn't tell you you couldn't even go in the restaurant because it was a private party. Well, no, no, no. We could we could go. So basically what happens is this. This is done through an agency. Okay. Okay. We have a regular gig at this place. And it's our normal day and our normal time slot. So what happened is somebody came in, a client came in and said, we'd like to rent your place for the evening for a corporate event. And then the restaurant said, okay, cool. And then they were probably like, now I don't know if this is what they said, but they were probably like, oh yeah, and we need entertainment. And then they were like, oh, well, we already have a band that plays here and it's just part of the deal. They probably said it's going to cost you this much, but they said, to us, well, you guys already have the gig and you already get paid this much, so just come in an hour early or later and it's no harm, no foul. But they don't know that that's a different fee because this is a corporate event. Yeah. That's a different fee. Yeah. And that's a different gig. Yeah. Yeah. So So they tried to sneak a, higher, tr- a higher paying gig under in, yes. in, in there and but didn't want to yes. pay you more. Yes. Those sneaky sneaks. Yes. Yes. So hey, wait, I, is this the booking agency that tried to this move or is this I, the restaurant? I think it was collectively the restaurant and the booking agent holding their hands together and going, I bet if we How could we make how more we, money? Yes. Yes. <laughs> how about we just tell them it's their normal gig, but we pay them their normal fee and we keep the money. <laughs> That's what happened. Those, That's what happened. Those scallywags. Yes. I'm mad at them. Yes. So I'm not happy with this. And neither is a, the other, like one of the other musicians. Like a collectively as a band, we're like, wait a minute. Yeah. That's a different fee. We should be making at least this much. Yeah. This is a different gig. Yeah. And right away I was like, well, look, man, they give us a lot of work. You know, maybe we should just like not make waves. And one of the musicians was like, no, no. And I was like, you know what? You're right. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> you're right. Like they try to pull a fast one on us. That's not how it works in this world. Yeah. But that is how it works in this world. And that's why I'm mad about it. Uh Oh, you try to pull a fast one on us. I'm getting loud, Phil. <laughs> yeah, back you off a little there. You pulled a fast one on us. You straight told us it's the normal gig. You just said, come in an hour later. Then you said, oh, well, somebody's bought out the restaurant. That doesn't mean anything to us. Then you tried to hire us for a corporate gig, a corporate event. Now, all of a sudden, we're, pre- we're freaking playing transitions. Dun, 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 dun. We're, doing, we're doing fill-ins. We're freaking making announcements. Drum roll, play some please. Dance. Drum roll, please. I literally <laughs> had to play a drum roll, please. Uh, they wanted dance music. Somebody was coming up to us. Can I sit in? I want to sing a song. Uh, Can we use your cordless mic for announcements? They're passing a cordless mic around the room and making announcements. That's corporate biz. We get paid for that. Yeah. One of the agencies that I work for charges for every single thing. Charges for, you want a cordless mic? Okay, well, that's this much more. Oh, you want an MC? Well, that's this much more. Oh, you want a dinner set? That's this much more. Everything is itemized and charged for. They straight said, no, it's the normal gig. Just play background music. Nope. That's not how it went down. Whew. Not how it went down. So what happened? What did you guys do? We you- played the normal gig. No, we played the, what they wanted. And then hope I, they sent an email like, hey, you know, you guys did this. I want you guys to be aware. I don't know how like colorful he got in his email, but he was just like, you know, we charge this much for that service. You hired us as a corporate band for a corporate gig, but you didn't hire us as a corporate band. You hired us as our normal gig, but yeah. you didn't have us play the normal gig. That's mm-hmm. not fair. It's different. That's not cool. That's shady. Yeah. Get out of here. Get no. out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Who do you think you are? <laughs> 
<laughs> Telling you, these people, man. Yeah, that's that's some sneaky biz. So that's I've never cool. seen this. One of the musicians was not happy, dude. Yeah. Not happy. I've never seen him this not happy. Really? He was just like, no. He's like, I've seen this on all different levels. I've been doing this a long time. He's like, I've done this on the top level where, you know, we're getting flown in and, you know, I've done hundreds of corporate events, thousands. And like we fly in, I've done them where we're staying in suites and we're, you know, everything is well taken care of. I've done this all the way down the scale to like, we're not getting treated very well. And he's like, one thing that I've learned is as soon as you allow them to do this, they're just going to keep on doing it. He's like, we need to put our feet down right now and be like, no, this is not acceptable. You cannot do this. Yeah. You've, you've, you've pulled a fast one. You're trying to pull a fast one and be like, nope, it's the normal gig when it's not. Yeah, it's kind of, that sucks. Yeah. No, oh, my gosh. And like, I honestly was not that mad because I was like, I'm stoked to play with these guys and I'm stoked to like play the gig, the normal gig. Did they tip at least? They did. To be well? It was like an average night. Oh, so no. No, it was good. It was good. Not enough to make up for the... I'm I'm thinking no. maybe they tipped you like, you know, really well no, so it would make the, up for the the fact that you're getting a you're doing a corporate. I'll gig. just put it this way: the pay scale for a corporate gig versus a pay scale for like a restaurant residency is a big difference. Yeah. So they would have to tip a lot. Well, that's what I meant. Um. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. Look, like I would rather have a gig than not have a gig, and it was still the same allotted time. It was still only a four-hour gig. Yeah. Um, so I'm not too bothered at the end of the day. I'm just like, well, at least we got our normal pay. But I don't – it's principle. I'm a big advocate for principle. Yeah. You can't do that. You know what you're doing, and you did it on purpose. To somebody who loyally plays your gig often, <laughs> very often. Yeah. We loyally, we're, we're grateful for the gig. Don't get us wrong. We're grateful for the gig. But you know what you're doing. That's, yeah. that's the same thing to me. That's the same thing as buying a, like a suitcase at a department store and filling it with candles and plates and pots and pans and whatever else and then walking up to the register and being like, I'm just getting this suitcase <laughs> yeah, when it's full good. of all that stuff. That's a good way to put it, yeah. You can't do that. That's stealing. <laughs> yeah. They freaking stole from us. Mm-hmm. We fulfilled our end of the bargain and more. Well, we, hopefully, hopefully everything gets worked out and you guys get get a few extra bucks for yeah. all the. Well, extra. he sent an email and the guy was like, "I understand where you're coming from and like, what would you normally get paid?" And I don't, I don't, I haven't heard anything else. So maybe he's just like, "Wow, that's not what I had in mind." Yeah, I feel like at the very most they should at least pay us double. At least, mm-hmm. what they were asking for was more than double. Dang. So I just feel like, like if it was the Schmucky Metals band, like Schmucky Metals gets paid extra. Our fee is still the same, whether it's a corporate event or not, but it's mm-hmm. still better than a restaurant gig. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, like, if you're playing a wedding or a corporate event and there's extra things like um, transition, you know, stuff, can you make an announcement stuff? I'm in your MC now. Mm-hmm. Like, you get paid extra for that. That's why you get paid for a corporate band. They should have hired the Schmucky Metals band, but they avoided that by saying, no, we already have a band. They'll just do it. Yeah. Nah, man. Mm-mm. Yeah. Not down with that. Well, they should have just said, hey, we'll pay you extra because it's a corporate thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, what I told them is what they, what in my opinion, what they should have done, because that's our residency, they should have given us our pay no matter what. And then they should have offered us, hey, you guys can either have the night off or you, we can hire another band, but that's our residency. You can't take that away. I yeah. guess you can, but like the, 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 the ethical thing to do would offer us, Hey, they bought out the restaurant. And so you guys can keep the gig. At least they should have said you guys can keep the gig for the normal pay, or you can have the option of having the night off. Yeah. At least give us the option, but don't put us in that position of like, yeah, all of a sudden we're just playing a corporate event where we would get paid drastically a different amount and we're being used for different things, mm-hmm. you know? And like, we don't have the option to say, no, we'll just take the night off. Yeah. I mean, at the very least, they should have like 
talked about it. Yeah, because <laughs> at the end of the day, it if like, it's me, it should have been discussed at least. <laughs> yeah, if it's me, I would rather work and and make some money than no money. So at least give me that option to be like, well, dude, can you give us like anything extra for doing extra work? No. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess I'll just keep the gig. I'd rather not. Yeah, I'd rather keep the gig and not have the night off. But give me the option. Have some respect. Mm-hmm. That's utter disrespect, man. That's like, I can't even believe that. I can't even believe that. Yeah. So that's what happened. I'm, I'm not s- happy about it. I'm sorry, all. Corey. I hope it works out. But the thing is, that's how it works in our world. Yeah. These idiots out there, like, take advantage of us as musicians all the time because of the other idiots out there that are like, I just want to play, man. I just want a gig. I'll play for free. Yeah. I'll yeah. pay to play. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not down with that. And I, I almost slipped into that. I almost slipped into that. Well, they give us a lot of work. So, you know, let's just keep a lot of work rather than like stand up for ourselves. No, I don't want to lose the gig, but they don't play that. Don't play up that like, don't play into that. Well, these guys don't want to lose the gig. Don't hold that over our heads because we're fulfilling our end of the deal. Mm-hmm. We're there every week and we do our thing. We do our job. Yeah. Darn tootin'. That's been my soapbox. I ain't trying to hear that right now. People make me sick, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a soapbox, all right? I'm not like really mad. <laughs> I'm not really mad. <laughs> I like I said that's I love gotta, you think you got, that's got to be a sample. <laughs> <laughs> These people like it's not the band. The guys, the musicians are like straight stand-up guys. They're really dope musicians and they're really fun to play with and I love this gig. I love playing with them any opportunity I can get. I yeah. don't like being taken advantage of by the man, Phil. I'm with you, man. Yeah. I had a uh, frustrating incidents recently oh, where boy. Do I need to push the Phil soapbox? This box might place? be Phil's soapbox. <laughs> Phil! 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 I ain't trying to hear that right now. <laughs> Let's hear it, Funky Phil. It's the first one in history. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I was doing this work as an accompanist at a, a, uni- a university I shall not name. Okay. And I got a, a, a text that my gig was canceled the night before. Not cool. Or that I, they didn't need me to come in that week. So two dates. So the night before was one, and then the other one for that week, you know, it was obviously a couple days in advance, but still, it was like pretty last minute. These days, we don't need you. I pretty much assumed, okay, that sucks, but I should be getting paid because they booked me. They sent yeah. me specific dates, specific times. No, they of course not. They're not going to pay me for any of it. Of course not. I've tried. I've tried. I'm like, could you give me sick pay? Can you like, you know? I was I moved relying whole, on. I moved my whole schedule around. Yeah. For that. For that. For those. You know, because it's kind of weird times of the day. Yeah. And I expect expect the pay, and of course not. Why would they do that? That's like. But that's a, yeah. It's <laughs> like a whole nother level. You know. It's like a you know. But if you, it was anyone school, else, they've got like all you've got. St- different people whole different departments yeah and all sorts of people you got to talk to about stuff and yeah if if it's like if it's a school and like you know the like who knows what you know like i mean yeah dude, i can't even talk it just makes me so mad dude yeah i was pretty i was pretty pissed it's like it's uh, like one of the schools that we worked for when we were teaching drums like if they don't show if the student doesn't show up they still get charged for it they have to let you know in the allotted time yeah. Right, like there's a specific amount of time. So if you cancel on me, I should still be able to get something. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, makes me so mad. If it was yeah. anything else, you oh, I just don't show up for my like dentist appointment. Most of the time, there's a fee with that. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Everyone else gets it's yeah. It's hard being like, you know, your own business because everyone's just trying to. It's ethics. Everyone's trying to take advantage. Stop taking up. advantage of us. I don't know. We're just trying to feed our families. I might go see if I can still w- work something out because that that that's really frustrating and it makes honestly makes me not want makes me think about not working with them anymore. Cause yeah, it makes I me. I can't. It's not worth it if I'm gonna have days taken away last minute. And yeah. I won't. And I won't see that. I won't be. You know, it's too late to book some other work. Mm. You know. Yeah. There was a restaurant in um in uh 
San Diego like that I was playing with. With I probably got on a soapbox, I think, in season one with this. But um, we were playing with this this girl, the singer, and um, the whole time they were complaining that we were too loud. And then like they, I think they asked her. We were we were. I cannot express how quiet we were playing. We were playing <laughs> so quiet. Yeah. Like. I I feel like there was like at some point I wasn't even really playing. Like I was just like not even playing. Uh-huh. And um they were like but anyways that's not even why. So then they I think they asked her to like yeah, we're not going to book you anymore like or we're not we're, we they didn't give her any more dates. And then they also didn't pay her. Oh. So she paid us out of our, po- out of our it was her gig so she paid what? us out of her pocket and then they didn't pay her. Are you serious? And she was contacting them like every week, "Hey, you know, I never got paid for the gig that we actually did play." You know, and so I just like to, you know, we fulfilled our end of the deal. Can we just get our pay? And they would just blow her off. Oh, yeah, we'll have it for you next week. And then they wouldn't call. And then she would call like, hey, you know, you said this week. Oh, yeah, well, we got it for you. It's here. She'd drive all the way down the restaurant. Uh, they, who said that it was here? He's not here right now. What, what are you t- And like, they'd just give her the runaround. Oh, that's Dude, so Dude, I was so mad. I was like, I want to go in there and make it, like, make them pay us by just Okay, well then, if you don't want to pay up, then why don't I just walk out with a couple expensive bottles of wine that are hanging on your wall? I'll just grab them and walk. Why don't I just walk out with like one of your chairs? <laughs> you know, like I don't know, like because it's like the, the way this restaurant was set up. To you could order so much food, and as soon as the waitress walks away, you could walk out the side door, and no one would ever catch you. You'd be in your car and gone. I'm like, I'm never gonna go to that restaurant anyways. But I'm like, dude, I don't want to, you know, return evil to evil for evil. But like, yeah. Part of me, like, I start thinking like that. Like, well, you'll pay it one way or another. Like, I'm going to walk out after I've ordered a bunch of food. And, like, and then I'm going to grab a bunch of wine. And I'm going to walk out of your restaurant. (laughs) And, like, make sure that you pay for what you did. But then I'm like, I can't do that. I'm not that guy. That's just bad juju, I guess. That's crazy. But, yeah, that's not cool. You can't cancel your days Mm -mm. a couple days before. What, like, the day before? That's not yeah, cool. Yeah, it was the, the night before at like nine o'clock at night. Dude. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't need you actually. It's like, what? Bro. And you know, like everyone else, every, I know the thing that's really frustrating is I know that everyone I'm talking to is like salaried. Yeah. And none of this matters to them because they always get paid the same no matter what. Right. But I'm I'm depending on that. I was depending on that, that income, you know? Dude, <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. Like, I understand, like, if the gig cancels, but it's like, it's normally not the musician's fault. They want, like, the person you're playing with normally wants the gigs as bad as you. Like, but it's like, oh, we went with a different band, you know? It's like, it's on my, it's like we signed a contract. It's on my calendar. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, we just, we we went with somebody. Were were you going to tell us? Like, you know, it's, I've had two of those this, this year with just like, they went with another band and it's like, my gig of the week, you know, my, my bread and butter for the week. Yeah. It's just like, dude, thanks. I guess I'll just go drive Uber now. Like that sucks. You're like, I got a newborn baby at home, but no, it's cool. Like, yeah, it's cool. I don't need just gig idiots. (laughs) People make me sick, Phil. Me too, man. All right. That's been Phil. I ain't trying to hear that right now. Oh yeah. Uh Phil had a soapbox. Yeah. It's pretty rare, but yeah, sometimes Sometimes it happens. Sometimes I just get mad. Yeah. That's the way it is. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, dude. All right. Fig's laugh always cheers me up, though. Yeah. That is. What is wrong with you, Zildjian? <laughs> All right, Funky Phil, you ready to get our guest on? Yeah, yo. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think the world's ready. No. <laughs> we got a crazy good guest today. Friend of the show, friend of the drum brigade. Dude, this guy has worked with some crazy, crazy, crazy artists. Has played with the Beastie Boys, played with Money Mark, Kathleen Henna, Los Lobos, Offspring, Yeska, Oso Motley, BS2000, Black Alicious, Mariachi El Bronx, Sepultura, Gogo Bordello. Woo! Jack White, my God, Tenacious uh, D, the, hell? the Beastie Boys, 
The list goes on. Just You just saw him on a video with Vic Firth with Maceo Hernandez. We got Fredo Ortiz on the line. Fredo, what is going on, man? What the heck is going on? <laughs> Dude, you have played with some crazy. Your resume is like, it's, I mean... I mean, should we call it a resume? Your roster of artists that you play with <laughs> is so dope. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You're still out there doing it, man. It's so dope. So dope. Yeah, thankful and grateful to be still doing it. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, I don't know. It just, it just happened. Yeah. It's happening. Man, that's cool. Um, well, thanks for coming on the show today with us. Um, we've wanted to have you on for me. a while and, like, it's like you're you're not a hard dude to track down, but like you're busy, you know. You're on tour a lot and you're doing stuff all the time, and it's that's like a really good thing. You know? Definitely, because so. it could be the opposite. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So. I'd be like, damn. You've played yeah. with like everybody. Like I've never met anybody that's like, ah, uh, Beastie Boys. I don't know. Like you know, or like <laughs> you know what I mean, like. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, some of the other ones like Mariachi El Bronx is like a band that everybody loves. Like nobody's ever yeah. said anything bad about like Gogo Bordello or like Mariachi El Bronx or Beastie Boys is the biggest one for me. Like everybody right. loves the Beastie Boys. You, you Including played, me. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> it's like you played with you played with like so many of like it's like there's always those gigs where we're just like, oh, man. Like this is, I mean, it's a good gig. I'm sure some people will like it, but like, <laughs> but you've played with some where you're just like, you gotta be like, dude, I can't believe I'm here. I'm loving this right now. Like I just, I would be listening to this song if I wasn't on stage playing it. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. I mean like the offspring and all that, that came from just being on the first tour with the beasties. And that okay. was kind of meeting a tour manager that was like, Hey, we need that guy who plays those kind of crazy hand drums. <laughs> <laughs> and and the offspring wanna know if you want to go on tour. I'm like, ah, sure. I just saw you guys like a year ago, I don't know, somewhere at the gla- glass house or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> Man, that's that's like yeah, that's that's dope. Um yeah. it's like, yeah, that's so that was my first question for you. Like, you know, when you when you get on these amazing tours, like, is it more of a like or like these studio sessions or whatever, is it more of a like, okay, you do like one or two and then the floodgates open and now you just are this guy that everybody calls? Or is it like, have you had to like really work to like get yourself in there or like really like, I don't know, like kind of shake hands with a lot of people? Like how does it work for you? I mean, like, I mean, as we know our quote unquote profession of what we do, what we love to do is play drums and be in a music scene, right? So we're always hanging out mm-hmm. and we're always somewhere that there's music going on and you're always meeting new people. So it's kind of like that same, so even though there's that border of like, now I'm on this other upper tier mm-hmm. of like playing music and now touring and all that. It's like that Beastie Boy tour was probably like four and a half weeks, five weeks. Mm-hmm. And then I came back home and it was back to regular program, you know, yeah, going to um, playing the Natural Fudge Cafe or like playing, you know, uh, the whiskey or pay to play type of shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, like doing backyard parties. And But at that time, I mean, I was already doing Ozo Motley and Yesco was playing like bigger shows and opening up for Sylvia Cruz. So definitely those Jeez. bands were climbing. But to be at that BC Boy level, was it was a lot to take in and, and definitely word of mouth and... I mean, that's how I got the Beastie gig was somebody told Money Mark, Man. hey, there's this kid that plays percussion. Check him out. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I feel like that's the thing. Like, so, you know, my, my like, opinion about you is, like, you know, like, I'm, I think the first time I met you or saw you play was back in the day, like, in the 90s with Yeska. And I was like, who is this guy? Like, how do you even play like that? <laughs> like, what is this like? Like, you, I just never heard playing like that. But then the thing is, off stage, you're like uh, you're the homie, you know. Like you're the dude that everybody can just hang out with and have a beer with or whatever, and just like chat about normal stuff, whatever it is, like skateboarding or like drumming or like music. And I think that plays a big part of it too, where it's like you're the guy that can play his balls off, but like also people want to just hang out with, you know, like and like it's, and and, it's, and is down to hang or was down to hang. Yes, <laughs> like yeah, that. exactly. You know, yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, I think 
I mean, one one good uh, thing is from high school. One of my best friends, Louis Perez, is now a, like famous tattoo artist. Yeah. And, like, but he's a he's a singer, songwriter, guitar player, punk rocker, and like I met him in high school. And his dad ended up being in Los Lobos, and wow. I my dad used to take the family to go see Los Lobos, and so now I made the connection with him. I see his rock star dad, but I go to his home, and the family's totally humble. Everybody's like, you know, was just chill. So I think that helped me just be like, you know, I don't, I mean, I, I don't, I didn't know any other way to be, but yeah. myself, you know. So when I was with my homies, I was kicking it, and you wanted to drink, let's drink. You want to talk crap, let's talk crap. You know, yeah. it's like, and especially drumming, and then you know, having now like these names that are attached to me, like Beastie Boys and Money Mark and stuff like that, or it's like, oh, dude, like, I don't, that's crazy. Like, I just wanted to tell him the real story. Like, there was no other story. Or, like, I don't know. I couldn't just be like, oh, yeah, I'm on top. You know? Yeah. Like, I still felt like, you know, I'll do a backyard gig if I wanted to, you know? Like, yeah. I think that, sometimes, that yeah, definitely no. comes across, like, where it's like, you right know, on. I've never, I've never heard or got that impression from you. It's always like other people like, bro, do you know who this dude has played with? And you're just like, yeah, man, but I just love to play. And like, you know, and like, you're good at it. And that's right. what it is, you know, and that you don't really have to say much because the proof is in like now your, your roster of people, you know, that's dope. Super yeah. dope. Yeah. That's, that's, right. cr that's killer, man. So like, like, what do you have? Like, who are you currently playing with? with? What do you got going on? Like right now? Uh, let's see, uh, a couple of days ago, I was in the studio with, um, my friend, Maceo Hernandez, who you were saying, uh, you saw the Vic Firth video. Um, we have a group called East LA Tycho. Nice. Um, I met Maceo in 93 and we've been just doing it ever since. And he, he studied Tycho drumming in Japan when he was a teenager and young adult and came back and brought it back to Los Angeles because he was from East Los Angeles. And there, then again, see, I was a part of a scene with Yeska. And then somebody's like, dude, come here. I want you to meet this guy. He plays these Japanese drums. Wow. And we, and we hooked up. He's like, dude, I've been wanting to mesh like timbales and, and uh, Japanese taiko rhythms like together or Latin rhythms and, and Japanese and bring That's two countries together. Right. That's crazy. And um, I was like, yeah, I'm down. And they just, it, it just, it, it, blended really well the way we did it and it was nice to learn his uh, art of drumming you know which is extremely hard mm. i mean five minutes you're playing these big like two inch round sticks you know and they're yeah. about a foot long each or you know almost and wow it's not a regular drumstick you know it's like a, a bat you yeah. know and, you're, and it's not you're the whole wrist technique and all your rudiments just go out the window. It's really basic and single strokes and more arm and more martial art, you know, it's wow. like a whole different other story. But I mean, so we've been wanting to record every year as much as we can. And of course I'm always on tour. I'm never home, mm. you know, I'm, I've been grateful and lucky to still be working. So anytime I'm home, we're trying to get in the studio and we're working with uh, a friend of ours, Cesar Mejia, a recording engineer who's, also teaches at Cal State Dominguez Hills. So wow. he has a big room and you need a big room for these drums. You yeah. Know? You don't, can't just do it in a little studio. And, um, and yeah, we, we're, we're working on some new stuff. We have a record that's waiting to be released soon. Just trying to, uh, you know, loosen up some, uh, tighten up some loose ends and, uh, get it out there. You know, our, our goal is to get to Japan. Wow. And, um, you know, because he's con he's connected out there, but he wants to bring you know that that mesh of cultures, you know, and, and then there's that kind of scene where um, El Harukuroi and like Quetzal and they do like a it's like a Japanese Chicano scene, you know, and they bring right, the Latin yeah. dance out there or whatever, you know, and, and it's dope. And but we want to bring that out there too, but then go beyond that and just like bridge the two cultures. And I don't know, we just want them to see it, you know, have Man, them trip out, you killer. know. That's killer. You know, because I'm also playing guitar. I'm playing, you know, we're writing songs together. I'm finally, like, you know, trying to explore other, you know, I guess musical yeah. <laughs> outlets in myself, you know, and I can play some bar chords and can try to make up a melody. That's cool, so, man. Yeah, so East LA Taiko, and then uh, about to get on the, well, not on the road, we're going to do some New Year's shows with Gogo Bordello. Nice. This will end the fourth year. Wow. I joined in, or the third year, 2015. Yeah, so sorry. Um, yeah. So yeah, when, and we already got dates for 2019. Dope. So that's my current uh, 
a current hustle is uh, Gogo Bordello. Yeah. And, uh, and you're dope. playing. It's been dope. It's, um, you're playing drum set been, with them, right? I'm playing drum set, yes. Yeah, so nice. With uh, East LA Taiko, I'm doing like Latin percussion and kit. Mm-hmm. And Taiko drum. And then with Gogo, I'm doing straight up kit. Nice. That's what's yeah, that's what's really cool too is like you know like um, you have a lot of different avenues that you can you've taken drumming you know like where you know like I've we we do some occasional gigs together with when you're on percussion and I'm on drums but you know it's like and then you can jump over to drums like any any time and like you know you right. have gigs where you're playing you know drum set you're playing percussion you're doing both at the same time you're playing Japanese drums like there's and then then there's like. You know, like I've seen you when you were doing your your band uh, Bongaloids, where you were playing guitar and singing, and and at one time playing everything, right, with like right. pedals and stuff. So it's that's cool. Do you think that helps you too with your um with you know getting work is just being versatile and? I think so. I mean, when I met Money Mark, you know, I I, I when he was asking me about playing percussion, I didn't feel that that was a strong point at that point in life. You know, I was kind of getting into it because of Yeska. My dad was already kind of trying to push those instruments on me. Not push them, but he's like, hey, I bought you some congas. Oh, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. I don't know what to do with those, but I'm going to go play my Pearl Export <laughs> yeah. outside. You know, it's like <laughs> type of thing, you know. And so when I joined Yeska, that kind of pushed me. To like, well, you know, David was like, hey, don't – I remember seeing Timbales at your house. Was like, break them out, dude, because – the whole biggest thing at that time was Anton, a drummer, mm. had one of those like LP, like blue wood blocks. Okay, and that was and that was and that was everything. We were like, oh damn, percussion! <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> you yes. know, we didn't know, you know, and we were learning. Everybody was going to Pasadena City College and starting to like get exposed to Latin jazz and straight jazz and like. And I was learning all that stuff through them. I wasn't even taking the classes. So they were bringing that knowledge to rehearsal. Wow. And then I was soaking in, you know, like, oh, what's the, oh, comp? Okay, yeah, comp, oh, you follow the soloist. Okay, now solo, what, what do you mean solo? Like, <laughs> so, like all of a sudden we're learning all these, this jazz lingo and, you know, more expression than other than just playing a beat, you know? Yeah. And, um, uh, what should we call it, uh, so yeah, the percussion, that's what pushed me to play percussion. And I already had congas at home. I had a set of timbales. I'm like, okay, two toms and a cowbell. What do I do? But then I had other friends who were interested. And they're like, hey, let's go to this clinic. And we went to, uh, oh, what was it? Um, what was it in Alhambra? Padrini's? Man, I don't no. know. What was Padrini's? Anyways, we went to like small, some little music stores clinic. And I saw this guy uh, doing conga clinic and he called this one guy. He was like, let's get some volunteers. Up here. Show, show me what you can do on the conga. And, and there was this dude and he started like playing and he kind of does, I don't know if you've ever seen people, people play congas, but they like kind of cover, they cup their hand. Oh yeah. But, you know, and, they, and then they, they, well, they, they put like a little wall with their hand and they do the cupping slapping. Uh-huh. And the guy stopped and was like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm doing a slap. He's like, he's like, no, you're hiding what you're playing. Why are you hiding what you're playing? And like, my wheel started turning. I'm like, oh, that's not the way, because I was doing that, and yeah. I was like trying to learn that, and you know, learning the tension of a, a drum head and where where it could be to do an actual slap, which is just you know, kind of your fingertips and your hand kind of leaving a cup, right. you know, over the drum, and you know, kind of forcing it, but not too hard. You know, in the beginning, any I think any of us who try congas, we end up beating our hands up because we don't know what we're doing. Bro, and, you know, we get bruises and stuff like that. <laughs> and, I just recently played my first percussion gig and I was just like, I don't know how, I don't know what I'm doing. First of all, the <laughs> second of all, my hands were like dying, dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the first song I was just dying. <laughs> so much fun. There. Um, man, that's really cool though. That's like, yeah, that, that's one of the things that's like, I think, um, separates you from a lot of us, like a lot of drummers yeah. out there that like, there's this crossover and then those rhythms cross over too. And you're playing. Which, right. Totally. Yeah. And at that time I was, I was, when I met money, Mark, I was playing in a punk band, Los villains. Mm. And, 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 um, I was just like soaking in all kind of bad religion beats and no effects. I'm like, mm. you know, like trying to do all that stuff, you know? And, and, and here's this guy asking me about hand percussion. I was, and I was trying to tell him the fact that I was on kit, you know, and I was like, yeah, but I play a drum set. He's like, well, Play percussion too, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I got a gig. Come play with me downtown LA. Bring wow. your congas. I'm like, okay. 
Sure, and he had not told me yet that he was in the Beastie Boys, but I was like, all right, oh my cool. Gosh, dude. But that that straight up opened the door to okay, now I'm going to play percussion, and then I had an idea. I had the clinics. I had sort of you know what to do with the rhythms. Kind of had my hands down with positions and slaps and open tones, but nothing like straight up like pro, you know, where you mm. see like. Nino for Mozo Matni. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa, what's the, f-? yeah, you know, so that, yeah, that, so that opened up my door to percussion, and now I'm like, okay, and and once I did, once I got that Beastie gig, then that kind of put the stamp on me as a percussionist. But nice. then I started meeting fools who were like straight up, like it was in their blood, or they studied it, or they came from, you know, the country where that's just like every day, yeah you know, ingrained in your system, you know, and the rhythms and the names and all that. And I was just like, Oh, I don't know crap yet. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, but I can do it. I can kind of mimic it. I can do what I, I can put my, my flavor on it. And I think being able to learn how to solo mm-hmm. and how to put your own flavor on it helped me. And I guess kind of finding my own voice, you know, I don't really believe like I have a certain voice, you know, but I'm able to, you know, how you play along to a song, right? You're able to yeah. become the song instead of just playing a beat, right? No, but I think you I think you do, man. Like, in the Beastie Boys, you know, like, I mean, I, I grew up on, on that stuff and, you know, and skateboarding and snowboarding and all that stuff. And, like, and so having that crossover, I don't think they, at that time, you know, like, in the 90s, like, I don't think, you know, and I mean, I'm I'm not, like, really the authority on this, but I'm just saying, like, I feel like it's it was it's more important it's more fitting for you that has that punk rock background and like that you're you're like you know you're saying that you you weren't like it wasn't in your blood at that time if, you know like like what you were saying but like more of a bringing that crossover that hip hop that's what the Beastie Boys were you know in my opinion yeah. like it was like yeah. that that punk rock edge they could do a full on like hip hop tune and then the next song could be a full on punk rock song and it totally works, you know? And, right. and that's because that's what all of us, you know, the skater kids and the punk rock kids and the whatever, like we're into, you know, it's like, so mm-hmm. I feel like that crossover was like really important to that music. That's like, there is, I don't think there's any other guy out there that I can see playing that gig, man. <laughs> like you're the right. guy, you know, <laughs> right it's up. like, that that that's kind of important you know to have that you don't i don't i just i wouldn't want like i don't know poncho sanchez or somebody like playing in beastie boys it's just too authentic right right <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so um that's dope so okay so what was it like i know this is like probably a question you get all the time but like what was it really like playing with the beastie boys like what were the shows like what was touring like like you know what I mean, because that's that's a that's a huge gig. That's one of the biggest bands ever. You know, yeah. like I mean, you've you've played with a lot well, of those, but like I'll tell you this: I, I saw them in 1986 at the Greek Theater, and then I saw them at Lollapalooza. I think it was 94, 95 at the Velodrome, mm-hmm. and and those were two different eras, right? So there was like the Brass Monkey era, and then now. You know, the check your head era. Because right. I miss the Paul's Boutique era. Yeah. I don't know what, what I was doing or where that album. went or, you know, so people that are like, oh, Paul's Boutique, I'm like, I'm not that person because I didn't listen to it that much. Right. And But check your head comes along and then rearranges my whole head on music. Of course, it's like, oh, there's that punk rock I've been listening to with the Whittier kids. Right. There's that hip hop I've been listening to in Gardena because I, you know, next to the Rhodium where there's Dr. Grace would sell his mixtapes. Right. You know, when I was a teenager and then there's that there's that Latin jazz stuff that I'm that I listen to at home because my dad rocks that stuff. Mm-hmm. Willie Bobo, mm-hmm. Eddie Palmieri, Celia Cruz, you know, um Joey Batan and like stuff like that where I'm just like, Oh, these there's all these influence that I get from the world all in one tape. Like, what's up with that? That's yeah. awesome. You know, so it's like so when I get to meet them, like, of course, like my jaw dropped when I met Money Mark and I was just like, dude, you know, can I shake your hand type of thing? <laughs> like I was seriously fa- a fan. Dude. And right. Like, and then I get to meet them. They come to the gig and see me play with Money Mark. I meet Mike D and Yauk. Wow. Uh, rest in peace, Yauk. And, 
they came and checked them out, saw me play, and they said, what's up after? Didn't really talk much music. They just wanted to meet me, and they said, sounded good. And I'm like, cool. And I told all my homies, I'm like, dude, come over to 50 Bucks. Um, Beasties are going to be here. Just all my close friends, right? Yeah. Like, they're going to be here. Like, And uh, a week later, they hit me up, and they're, they're like, hey, so the band wants to know if you can you know, fill in for our other percussionist, who uh, is Eric Bobo, who is now with Cypress Hill. Oh, yeah. And Eric Bobo's dad is Willie Bobo, a famous wow. Latin jazz, Dean Balero from, from New York. Yeah. You know, so this whole connection that I'm starting to get connected to is just like, it's it's making sense, but it's also a trip, you know, because I'm like, wait a minute, I'm, <laughs> this is just kind of what I do at home. And now it's becoming a rea- my reality. Right. And I get to go to their, their studio in, in Atwater, but they had G-Sun Studios. And I was like, oh, this is that skateboard ramp studio. So now I'm in the skateboard ramp studio. I see the Dude. basketball court. I see the big open, like, second floor of a corner building and, and Atwater. And I see instruments. I see booths. I see skateboards. I see the half pipe. I see drums, congas keyboards and i'm just like oh this is cool and i guess with my experience with yeska and ozo like that kind of helped me understand also all that instrumentation and yeah. and how to vibe with each other right and then and then now that it's the beastie boys and I, I guess i've always you know my dad has always i don't know you know really was like respect others and this and that you know so i came in just really humble and quiet and like not trying to like mess anything up and just be respectful, right? And where, I don't know, maybe somebody else would be like, oh, shit, Beastie Boys, what's up, guys? And trying to, you know, play it up, you know? And I think, I mean, I, that's just how I was. I, I was. I was a little scared, you know? I was yeah. scared to be in that position. But now it's like I had to step up to the plate, too, and be like, you know, what do I do? My dad, you know, my he, he definitely was a big, you know, he was my backbone to all of this, but he's like, okay, you're going on tour with the, you know, a big band, you know, you know enough, but I think you need to go take a lesson and go get some advice from some of your older drum peers. You wow. know? And, and I think at the time I had just made friends with uh, Ramon Banda, the Timba little from um, Poncho Sanchez, mm. you know, and he, um, and that dude's a badass, like, like jazz drummer and drummer all around too. You know, he, he can do both. So I, I hit him up and I, and I was like, yo, like, can I get a lesson? And he's like, yeah, what do you want to know? I was like, I don't know. Like, it, it's, I felt like pretty, like, even though I had been playing shows and backyard parties, like it, it felt like I hadn't really done my homework, you know, or not that I had not gone to school, but I was just like, wow, now I'm really in a place where, you know, I've never been before, but now I have to perform and I feel I don't, know enough to be at this position but okay i'm willing to try you know i'm gonna make it or not Man. so i went to ramon and i'm like dude can you give me a lesson he's like well, what do you want to know it's like i don't know i'm gonna be playing congas with the beastie boys and you know i just wanted to know if you can give me some advice he's like oh beastie boys huh their, their stuff is pretty loud huh he's like you, they're probably not even gonna hear you over the over the stage with all those loud amps and everything <laughs> and the hip hop <laughs> and all that. He's like, so I'm like, really? He's like, no, nah, I'm just kidding. He's like, but I don't know. He's a defense. I'm like, so he showed me some rhythms, right? Some uh-huh. hand patterns that I still play to this day, wow. you know, and, and, um, I don't know the name of it. I don't know the <laughs> pattern, but it, it just, I, I remember hearing it in a, in a David Bowie song. Uh-huh. I forget which, which one it was, but, uh, so he shows me some licks and, He's just like, you'll be all right, man. He's just like, do your thing. He's like, and actually, he's like, you're going to get to be free to do whatever you want. It doesn't seem like they're asking you to, like, you know, do anything specific because all the music you're doing is pretty much, you know, just Latin jazz, like improv and, and right. jamming and just, you know, keeping it mellow. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, and, and I took that and, and totally did not have to apply any of that when the first show came about, which was... Uh, Australia, and I think Melbourne. So the, the the first tour, like straight, sent me to Australia for oh three weeks, <laughs> and then another two weeks in, in Easter Asia. So that was my first time out of the country doing wow. music. You know, I mean, besides um, Yeska, like Yeska went to Finland and stuff, but okay. this was like seriously like my first time. And with the BC Boys, and they were headlining. Oh my this god! Festival. <laughs> That's awesome. You that know, and, and then and then I and then I see the 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 festival list, and it's like 
Jawbreaker, Bikini Kill, Pavement, Wow, Rancid, what? Um, the Amps, which was Kim's deal, Kim Deal's band, the Pixies, um, Beck, Foo Fighters, Sonic Youth. And Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all, all, all uh, on one bill and i had just finished seeing all those bands separate right like in different times different places and like and here i am on a festival with all of those bands and then i'm in the headlining festival and wow. i had no i had no idea what to do like i was like i don't i don't i don't i didn't feel like i had to act like anything you know but yeah. I, I can tell, you know, some of the personas that were around me that have been doing that tr- touring for years, and you know, now I'm in their element, right? Now I'm seeing the backstage element. Mm. You know, what, what what's backstage like? You know, well, here it is. You know, people are reading, people are having beers, <laughs> exactly. Somebody, you know, so <laughs> people are uh, killing time, basically. You know, and yeah. so I was I was just walking around. Oh, one of my favorite bands was on their Jawbreaker. Uh. You know, and I, and I, and I and I was still like fanning out, like to all these bands, like, hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> and, and then like. You know, and I'm having dinner with Dave Grohl, and like wow. I don't know, it was just a trip because I was just I was just thrown into it, right? So yeah. now, now I'm in the mix, now I'm connected, but it's like I don't even know what to say because I'm still a fan, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and then I'm in the headlining band, the Beastie Boys, and and that and they and they trump everybody, you know, over right. you know in my book, and I'm and I'm here I am playing with them. And I'm just oh. like what. And then there's like after in Australia, so it's, I don't know if you've heard of like Big Day Out or some one of the big traveling festivals. Uh-huh. But this one was called Somersault, and it, and it was um, and it was his own. It was a it's an offshoot of uh, Big Day Out, and we were our own thing. And so every hotel that we were at, we'd have we'd take over the bars. Wow! And 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 so there was after every festival, we'd go back to the hotel. And we just jam in like whatever lounge that they had and just take Dude. over. Like it'll be a band and we just take over. And like, I think like I was on kit one time and Dave Grohl was on guitar and like, what? Uh, like Taxmere <laughs> and like Bad <laughs> Rock. And like, and we're just, you know, we're just getting drunk and jamming and wow. having a good time. And I'm like, oh, okay, like this is what's up. This is, this is where I'm at now, you know? And, and quickly accepted it quickly. Like you said, I, I mean, I don't know. I just, quickly made friends, you know, and I, I rarely make enemies or try not to. And, and it was just a good hang, man. And I think I, I was quickly and easily accepted as one of theirs, you know, just cause I, my connection with the beastie boys, but then I, then comes like, okay, well, what am I doing musically? Am I doing anything musically to make an impact? Like, I guess at that point, I, it didn't matter. And it mattered the fact that I just played, you know, and yeah. did my part. You know, and 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 I knew it was with the trip is that I knew those songs that the Beasties were playing. Like, uh, um, I can't even think of the names right now, but uh, um, like I knew the conga parts, or I I just remember like like I know that part. So it was like it was super simple to kind of just fit in, right? Right. You know, I didn't have to work too hard. I didn't have to memorize a lot of things, but then I had to like perform because now I turned to my left and Money Mark's jumping like a and rabbit dudes just <laughs> all over the place. Boom, boom, boom. Wow. Uh, and the, the the boys are all over the place, and they're just like doing weaves, and like I'm like, whoa, I'm like, what do I do? I'm like, I just sit here and like, all right, yeah, I'll just sit here and play gongas and stuff, you know. Man, but that yeah, that was it, it was it's definitely it was a trip, but it was a good experience, a definitely a good le- learning experience, you know, because when I came home, that was it, you know, there wasn't no tour extended after that. Right. There was no, no no plans in the future. It was like done. That was my Beastie Boy moment. Now back to the Dragonfly with Ozil Motley, you know, right. every Thursday right. or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, back to my regular program. I think we've all like you know like a lot of us have experienced that that life. A lot of people don't realize, you know, when the tour is done, it's like you're living it up on tour and you're traveling, you're seeing stuff, and you're just you're being fed and you're staying in nice places and you're eating good and. And then you come home and it's like, okay, I got to throw out the trash and like, I got to like, I got to hustle <laughs> yeah. up and try to find a gig, you know, like yep. I, it's like, that's, that's the aspect that a lot of people don't really like see that, like, you know, they think it's the party continues when you're off the tour, but real life hits you kind of sometimes smacks you in the face when you're yeah. done with the tour and until the next one. And then you're and and sometimes it's like all about that hustle of just like, okay, where's the next tour coming from? I need to find the next tour, you know? And like, 
get it get it going man but those man those have you ever thought about writing a book dude like yeah, I, I, I have i need to uh, i have i should be starting something and i just i don't know my life's a trip and yeah. right now i'm just enjoying uh, raising my daughter and yeah, that's cool having a family at home and i don't know trying to balance music within that now yeah like it's a trip you know because that music, music traveling and music was just like every day for me Mm-hmm. It became an everyday thing. That became my job, you know, so to speak. Yeah. You know, that's where now I can do that, but I can make money at it. So now I got to keep, keep it up, you know, and how do we do that? Cause there's so many musicians in one little city or big city mm-hmm. and trying to do the same, trying to, you know, get the same thing. But, you know, I guess uniqueness and just, you know, the way, the way you, you work with people definitely helps a lot. Like you were saying, yeah, you know, being, being able to relate, being able to, just be in the moment and not be scared to do whatever, whatever it takes to do what you got to do at that moment. Man, that's like, that's, I mean, for, for dudes like us and like, I know a lot of people that listen to our show, these kind of things are just like, man, it's crazy. Like I would be freaking out the whole time. Like, first of all, like you said, like fanning everybody, like, Oh my God. Like, but then I would be like, don't mess this up, man. Do not mess this up. And then I just get in my own head and like, you know, I mean, on stage, it's like one thing when you're, when you're able to do what you know how to do, but it's like, you know, I always think about that too. I want to be the guy that people get along with and not like, I don't want to mess that up. You know, <laughs> like it's like a fine line sometimes. But well, I totally thought I'd mess the BC gig up on the first gig because when it, so when I would perform, I would only perform maybe about six to eight songs out of a 20 song set list. Okay. So I, I wasn't even on stage the whole time. So me and Money Mark were just up and down. You know, we'd go up for three songs, leave for four songs, mm-hmm. go up for three songs, and then and then come back in the end and do sabotage and stuff like uh, that. You know? So it's like, so I wasn't even up there the whole time. But the the first song, um, Groove Holmes, I think it was, um, we start playing it, and I start doing my part, and all of a sudden, like. The conga heads just seemed super dead, and oh. I, ne- I had I I wasn't standing up. I was sitting down playing. Mm-hmm. So everything was at sit- sitting level, and um, I was learning. You know, I, I eventually liked standing up. But um, so I hit the drum, and it's just a, a super dead thud on both drums. Apparently, the humidity in Melbourne had just oh. made those heads so dead and soaked. That when I hit them, there was no tone, and I and I hit them like, oh no! And I look at them, and they're smiling at me, and I'm like, what do I do? Because now you can't hear me. I'm not. I don't get to perform. I mean, I get yeah. to perform, but it's like I don't hear my notes. So I start tuning and acting like I'm playing at the same time. Uh-huh. <laughs> Trying to tune the juggle. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, this is it. This is this is my unprofessional moment. I I messed up. Oh, I'm done. Oh. And I and I. And I tell them after, I was like, dude, did you guys hear when my drums went dead? They're like, no, what happened? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Everything was cool. Sound, <laughs> sounded good. What's the problem? <laughs> like, oh, wow. Okay. You know what? Never mind. It's yeah. all good. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's crazy. Even at the top level, man, you get, there's still those days. It's like every dream I have. Like, okay, the, the intro music's starting. I got to get on stage and my drums aren't really set up. They're like spread out. Yeah. It's like, you know, I don't have <laughs> drumsticks. I got to play with like French fries or something, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man that's crazy dude like i feel now, how like old are, how old are those french friends <laughs> <laughs> i know <right? laughs> play with like baguettes or something i don't know <laughs> there you go um i feel like we can sit here and just talk about like we could just go maybe that's a different podcast man just go through them one by one like what's it like playing with like gogo bordello what's it like playing with this <laughs> man and it's just like i know you got that's why i'm like you should just write a book dude like it's you got so many, like so many cool bands and so many cool stories that it's just. I like, mean, from from that one Beastie gig, so the tour manager of Rancid started jump from that gig to now he's going to continue with the Offspring. And it was like, oh yeah, I remember seeing this guy playing with the Beastie Boys. Let's call him. Hey, do you want to go out play with the Offspring? We got some like East Coast shows. Like, wow, sure, cool. And it was just one song. Mm-hmm. I forgot uh, noise or conspiracy or whatever that. Nah, 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 nah. You can do it. Oh uh, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and 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 the part, the drum part was so easy and like and they they hired like three guys one guy to do a guido part one guy to do conga part which was me and then the timbali part wow and uh, I forget uh, oh, what was uh, this old drummer from Good Riddance was doing the guido part and they hired this new guy but we were just on on the road we just we were there for one song <laughs> that's and, crazy um, actually no that was later before it was just me. 
uh, and uh, Josh Freeze came on tour wow. with us just because he was going to take the drummer's place for a couple of gigs. So he was coming out to hang, uh-huh. and they just like that was a trip. Like I'm like, you're just here hanging, like you don't have oh you don't have a gig or anything. Like you're just kicking it, like. <laughs> and so and so he would come up on stage, and he was like, he was like, dude, he's like, one show, we gotta we gotta do some flash paper. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you know, magicians who the thing flashes like real quick. He's like, I know where to get that paper. And it's super flammable. <laughs> we'll, play, we'll do it at one of the gigs. <laughs> I'm just like, what? And like, and here I am hanging with Josh Free. I, I went to the, I, I remember him from the Vandals, you know. And yeah. then like, I, like I didn't know his whole background and everything. And and here we are, just kicking. And there's another moment. Where I'm just like, oh, I'm just kicking it with Josh Free and <laughs> lighting flash paper on stage and at the Philly show. <laughs> Like playing with the offspring. I'm like, what, where am I again? What's wow. going on? You know, oh I think gosh. this whole time, like, you know, I, this is what I wanted to do with my homies from back home, like the punk band, yeah. the villains. So like, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to be, we wanted our band to be at that level. Of course we all do right at any given point of mm. just being like, I just want to play and tour, but I became the gun for hire. Yeah. I became that guy that was like, oh, talk to that guy, talk to that guy. And when from after that BC Boy gig, I mean, I was already working with Ozo and Yeska, and we had enough stuff, you know, to go around that kept us busy. But this is now another level where Through Money Mark introduced me to, like, actually doing sessions, at, you know, as for money. And he's like, hey, I'm, talk to this guy. He wants percussion. He wants tambourine. I'm like, oh. And I only had, like, two tambourines, like, now, like, my arsenal is, like, I have, like, 20 tambourines. You know? like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, you know, every every time I'm in a, a, a thrift shop, I'm like, oh, this one sounds nice. So, so, so it's like I <laughs> learn now how to, like, have the arsenal of sound, you know, right. and to be able to be the studio guy and then be the live guy. And then, you know, it's, like, it's a trip. Man, so cool, though. Like, su- such great stories and, like, really, like, just dope, man. You should be proud. <laughs> like you know, I'm definitely cool. proud. I, I, I'm proud that I got made my dad or, you know, my parents were proud because my mom didn't want, want me to go on that beastie tour. Really? She was like, hell no, you're not leaving. You're finishing <laughs> school. You just got out of high school. You're about, you started college and, and you're just going to leave. She was like, and my mom was an educator. She was a teacher. Uh, so she was like hard up on like, no, you're going to school. And then after school, you can, you know, decide to do these things. I'm like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I'm like, this is the Beastie Boys. Well, I'm like, seriously. Like, and she's like, I don't know. And then my dad's like, might as well give him the chance. I don't know when yeah. he's going to get this chance again. You know, so, I mean, definitely having, you know, the backup of my folks, you know, and definitely help. But it's just like, my mom didn't want me to go. So who knows what I, you know, where I've been. What, and what if I would like, like I, I was given the chance to be a part of Ozo, like be part of the core, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 at that point, I was just like, I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what to do with this music thing, but I I like it. I want to keep going, and I want to just be in one place. But now I'm in so many places, yeah. and, and I, I don't know. And I didn't feel like I was spreading myself thin. I was just I felt like I was just gaining all this knowledge from different parts of LA, you know, parts of the world. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, so I kept it open. I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep my freelance status and let's see where, where this goes. That's dope. That we, I feel like we're like kind of similar in that aspect too. Cause my, my dad is involved in music. My dad's a vocalist. And then my mom is not. And like uh-huh. when I was, when I was coming up, like trying to <clears throat> start my career as a drummer, my mom was just like, Oh no, no, no. She's like, you know, you got to get a real job. <laughs> And I was just like, dude, I was like gigging, you know, around town, making more money than my friends. And, but like, she didn't like that I would be out late and then sleeping in during the day. So she's like, no, you gotta, you gotta get a real job, you know? And I like went into construction. It was just stupid. But my dad was always like very supportive. Um, And like musically too, you know, that's what blew me away about like that era that you're talking about with the BC boys. When Check Your Head came out, like, I, I mean, of course, you know, when I was a kid, I loved, you know, the, their first album and, or the first really popular album. And then my uncles were into, like, Paul's Boutique. That was, like, one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, uh-huh. But then when Check Your Head came out, it was just, like, a little bit more punk rock and, like, edgy than their other albums. And so, you know, like, my dad's, like, a, you know, a jazz singer, but he was also in, you know, the 70s funk stuff. And then my grandpa's Puerto Rican. And so all the Latin stuff was all there. And, like, and um, 
you know, and then the punk rock aspect was just what I was into. And like, I was into ska and like all this stuff. So it was just a trip to like, like how do these guys know? Like, everything that i'm into like i'm into hip-hop and i'm into punk rock how do they know that like all it's like what all of us are into you know it's just like it's yeah. this really dope era man i think that's it's definitely cool. and like being raised around music and like coming from like a musical family and like and like an interracial family you know with my my dad right. being black and my my you know i was really close with my puerto rican side of my family like so hearing all that latin music and like and hearing that in like hip-hop and in punk was like I just can't understand how these, I just love it so much. Like, I can't understand how these guys yeah. are like, they've capitalized on exactly what I'm into. Like every aspect. I'm like, it just blew my mind, you know, even till this day. So, um, definitely really cool. So, um, so you're getting gearing up for Gogo Bordello. Um, how is it touring with Gogo Bordello and like the, the, what do they call it? The gypsy punk movement. <laughs> <laughs> with that the gypsy, <laughs> gypsy punk movement yeah, yeah man it's it's been awesome it's a it's been a, a wild ride of course i think any uh well, there's only been three gogol drummers yeah uh elliot uh oliver oh, yeah. and uh, me and um i think they all have their own crazy stories you know and mm. and um i think i didn't when i saw it for the first time uh, I didn't know what to think of it. I, I, I don't think it, like, I think it was so wild and crazy and over the top that it, it kind of went over my head. Mm -hmm. So I was just there having a beer and enjoying it and being like, oh, this is cool. And I think my, my only thing was on my mind, I think, was that I, w I wanted to say what's up to Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I knew Oliver from back in the day because when he was playing drums with Ocean Eleven, mm -hmm. I mean, we we did, like, tons of gigs with Yeska and Ocean Eleven and the whole like LA like um, Hong Kong cafe scene and all that so I, here I am going like oh I'm going to go say what's up to my homie and then that was the night he was like yo I'm thinking of leaving it's funny that you're here because I think you would be the guy to take my place and I'm like alright yeah whatever holler at me I'm not doing anything right now I hadn't been working MCA I think had passed Oh. Yeah, he had passed the year before. Yeah. You know, I was trying to find my way mm. in the world as, you know, now, you know, and all the other gigs that I had are all taken. Nobody's really calling, you know, and I'm like trying to figure out my life back home. Like, I've been on the road so much. It was like a trippy time. Yeah. You know, but, um, but yeah, so it's like I finally get the gig. And I remember you telling me that you were talking to Eugene. And so I was like, I don't even know what's up with this gig. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. And fingers like, cool. Like, yeah, like whatever. I'm all down to try it. And, um, I don't know It I say it took me about a year and a half, about two years to really be solid with them. It took a long time. Yeah. It took a long time to really get on the same page. And, you know, and me and, and Thomas on, on rhythm, you know, it's like he would click with me, but I still had trouble kind of learning that gypsy bounce, whatever they right. had going on, whatever they were used to. Because Elliot had one one style, and then Oliver had his style, mm -hmm. and then I'm bringing in my style. Like, And then, and then again, I find myself in that place where now, like, because in Yes Guy, you probably saw me, like, playing... Was it on percussion, or did you see me play kit? With I saw kit you play kit both? most of the time, yeah. Okay, so so before, I just used to be the timbalero in Yeska. Actually, yeah, we, I've seen you play that, too, to play a timbales, too. And then, so then I, I, I morphed them, right? I morphed the kit with timbales and regular kit. Yeah. And um, here's, like, Gogo playing, you know, four bars of punk rock going into one drop reggae. Yeah. You know, going into some gypsy jazz Going, you know, going into that gypsy oopsa, mm -hmm. you know, like, and it, and it kind of, it was nice to be able to understand all that. Yeah. Uh, and because of my background and knowing all that stuff. So it was like, I was like, all right, I can, I think I can get, get this, you know, but it took a while to like, now here's the end of 2018 starting in 2015. We're tight. You know, we, we, we got each other's backs. <clears throat> I think he can call anything out and I'm ready to go. That's cool. I think my body's conditioned. It took my body a long while to like, I think, I mean, maybe, maybe you can relate. To, of course you can relate to it. 
where you get to playing something over and over and over again over time mm -hmm. that your muscles and your body get used to that. So all of a sudden it becomes easier to do yeah. certain things, right? Certain yeah. stretches, certain hits, certain things that you had trouble in the first place, but now they're like, boom, I can bust this. Right. So it's like now like I'm, I'm comfortable back there to the point where like, I think Eugene wants more reaction on him. Can you bounce more? Or like, you know, like <laughs> I'm not, not bounce, but like, you know, because I, I sit there real like stoic, right? And oh, my yeah. arm's just like right there. I have everything close and try, I don't even want to like work hard, <laughs> you know, and try to like position the hi hat because the hi hat gets beaten the most. It's the most hi hats I've ever broken in my life. Really? Yeah. No top top hi hats have all cracked. Wow. And uh, so I've been trying to, it's funny, like now I'm like trying to search for the right symbol, which is going to be the lightest, which is not going to be too loud, mm -hmm. which is going to last. But now my, my trick is that I've, I've flipped the, flipped it upside down. So heavier oh, yeah. hat, hat on the top, lighter I, hat on the bottom. I used to do the same thing with Amber Lights, man, because I would beat yeah. the crap out of my hi-hats every, every gig. And, <laughs> and yeah, so I played them backwards forever. Right, and they la last a little bit longer, you know. Yeah. So, but it's it's been a wild ride. The shows are awesome. The festivals are dope. I mean, they got so much love around the world, and yeah, it's killer. Like so much, like endless work, festival work, and like you know, seeing how they do in the states compared to the Europe, and I mean, they just got love everywhere, and they got that support system. So it it works for them. Whatever they're doing works, and I'm I get to be a part of it and be a part. I just recorded my first record with them. Nice. That came out uh, last year, called Seekers and Finders, cool. and um, that was a combination of like, I think they were the singer wanted to just kind of get it done, so he had ideas kind of already written stuff from, that they demoed with Oliver. So I, I kind of found myself in the position where I was playing somebody else's idea, mm -hmm. and I wasn't getting to create. But since I'm used to that doing that right just going in somewhere and be like can you do this sure da, 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 da. Yeah, oh it yeah. sounds amazing <laughs> okay give it some of your flavor all right that's it cool boom paid out you know it's yeah. like so now so now i get to no i didn't i didn't get to that i had to like here here's the beat that we came up with but then kind of morph it my own right yeah and make it my own but then keep it like i, I think i was always channeling elliot and i was always channeling oliver but then doing my own stuff and the coolest thing, here's the full circle crazy thing of, you know, what I've been doing is that they rented the BC Boy studio in New York City, the last studio oh, no way. that I got to record uh, the mix-up record with BCs. Yeah. So, you know, they weren't using the studio. One of the engineers, well, the management of, of um Gogo were like, hey, you think you can hit them up and see what's up? So I hit them up. and like, hey, we're looking for a studio. They're like, come on in. They strike the deal. All of a sudden, I found myself back in that studio with Gogo recording. Oh. I got all my stuff there. Like, all my gear still there. Like, you know, and they're tripping. Wow. Like, I think, you know, Eugene is definitely a Beasties fan. And he's like, he's like, I just want to be somewhere where there's been good stuff, you know, coming out of. I want that juju, you know. Like, I think they... They've recorded that inner ear where uh, Minor Threat Fugazi Studios at yeah. in DC. You know, oh. so he loves he loves Fugazi, so it's like he, he wants to be somewhere. So I was like stoked to be there. He was stoked to be there, and so we got to record that record and put it out, and we toured it all 2017, 2018. Wow! I think I think next year might be the extension of it. There hasn't been anything recorded, but uh, but yeah, it's just uh, it's been cool. It's been it's been I've been happy to still keep creating yeah you know, that's and, great that's so um, awesome that's like and it's too like it's it's like i'm i'm quite a bit younger than you and well maybe just a little bit younger than you and oliver so i was like a kid going to watch you guys you know playing right. favorite ska bands and i you know oliver's kind of like a another mentor of mine like drumming mentor i always looked up to his style and his his playing and stuff and uh you know that's it's cool like you know he's kind of a a similar situation with me with that, with that gig where I was like, um, talking, talking with Eugene and like kind of trying to go for the same gig. Um, not knowing that you were going for it too. <laughs> I probably would have just backed <laughs> off, but, 
but yeah, we, we met up and like, uh, you know, I didn't know anything about it. I just, w- I thought it was cool for sure. But like, I, I wasn't like coming into it. Like, dude, I know this band. I know this, this situation. Like I'm, I'm all about it. It was just kind of like, right. I know Oliver and, um, right. and that was that. But then when I heard, like, when I heard you or you were going to start rehearsals, I was like, dude, he's the guy, man. Like, <laughs> like, you know, of course I want a gig, but like, that right. like I don't know if I'm a fit, and the whole time I was thinking that like I don't know if I'm the I don't know if I'm the right guy. Like I know like I know I could cover the gig well, like, you, as far as playing. I could, say, I could say that you never know until you're there. Yeah, that's the true. Team, right, that's true. You know, and and, and I think I think personally from watching you play, I think you could have handled the gig just as oh, yeah. I could have, or I I am now. It's like I think I think it's just a matter of being able to just kind of flow with them, right? Yeah, you know, but. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I'm just saying that I think you would be able to have the gig for sure. Oh, that's cool, man. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, right on, dude. Well, like, um, okay, so let's let's move on to um, some of our, like, more just random uh, rapid-fire questions. And, like, we're going to have to definitely have you back on, though, to talk more about, like, tour stuff. Yeah. Because there's sure. just, like, so much stuff that we haven't even touched the surface on that we could talk about all days, all day and like people would just be glued to this podcast. So, um, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really dope. What a, what a freaking great story you have, man. Crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah, dude. man. I'm <laughs> lucky, l- lucky to be able to still be alive and talk about it. Not that I ever yeah. had experience of not being here, but it's just like to be able to still be alive and, you know, and just experience it and talk about it. And now, and now still doing it of like, I'm still doing it and then yeah. being like, okay, how can I pass this on to others? And right. yeah, thank you for your podcast for like, of course, trying to start sparking that, you know? It's like, yeah. Um, okay, let's do some rapid fire Q and A. Rapid fire. Yeah. Q. Drum, 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 drum Brigade Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So, rapid fire Q and A. This is like, some of these are just not drum related, some of them are just. I don't know, just random questions that like we ask our favorite drummer friends. Uh, okay, Funky Phil, I want you to ask the first one because I don't know where to even start. Oh man. Um, okay, you're about to be executed. Oh boy. <laughs> what is the last <laughs> meal that you order? Um, if my mom was still alive, it would be her uh, chile verde. Okay, nice. Yeah. So they're uh, pork, pork cubes uh, marinated in a chili green sauce, and I don't know. It's just my mom did it like no other. So that's wow. what I would. If I'm about to be executed. Give me that chili verde. Ooh, nice. I think I was going. I was always going with New York pizza, but I think I'm changing that to my grandpa's <laughs> cooking Sunday cooking, man. Like, yeah, right? yeah, it's yeah. It's got to be something. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Rice and gondolas, like. Oh, see? Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Oh, man, my grandma. You want to go out happy, right? Yeah, <laughs> give me that. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, pizza pizza would be good, but then it's like, okay, which pizza? Yeah, From yeah. where? Is it Roy's? Is it, is it Stan's pizza? Yeah. Is it which one? <laughs> yeah, and then you take a bite, and you're like, this is not what I had in mind, but that's all you get. <laughs> you know, I know my grandpa's cooking is going to be bomb. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I guarantee at the time, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Okay, uh, okay, so what do you see on social media or on the internet in particular with drummers, that makes you shake your head. Like, oh, man, here we go. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> uh, oh, bouncing. Bouncing? Speaking of bouncing earlier, like, yeah, hey, can you do a little bouncing? <laughs> uh, the, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I understand the passion of being lifted off your chair, but sometimes it just looks ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have... I love it, but I'm also over it. Like I'm, I'm getting sick of dudes trying to blow up the feed with like just random drum videos, like 15 seconds of glory. Oh yeah. Um, I'm getting tired of the chop stuff. And in particular, I'm getting so tired of the like, like drum fill of the day or like lesson of the day. And it's like random, 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 random. And it's like almost, it's like borderline, like no one's going to be able to figure this out. But they right. like somehow like yeah it's I'm just I can't think of specifics but like some of them I like but for the most part I'm like that's not a well, drum well, fill dude that's a chop and it's lame 
Right. <laughs> like, like, you're just trying to like impress the internet right now. You're not trying to like educate anyone. You're just trying to impress right. fools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phil, yeah. what do you got? Um, yeah, I got, I'm, I'm with you on the whole like ripping f crazy fills thing, but my, mine's more specific. It's okay. where, especially when they're doing stuff like that, but they look like really mad or like <laughs> overly, overly serious. Like, <laughs> they, like, they just have this like ah, I'm so angry. Yeah, it's like dude, you're playing drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. That's the other thing. The the vicious like face thing. Yeah, so serious right now. <laughs> um, I have another one actually. I know it's only supposed to be one, but like this one I think is funny, but it also makes me shake my head. Is Cajon drum covers, dude? <laughs> I'm what? Sorry. Oh wow! I'm sorry, I never even. <laughs> I didn't know that yeah, existed. Man, yeah, you're going down some other path. Sorry. <laughs> Cajon what are you drum covers. What, what are you <laughs> it's become a thing where, like, I'm looking for them now, and I'm like, oh man, this guy's doing a drum cover of like some Bruno Mars song, but on uh, Cajon. Oh, <laughs> oh man, I've got. Well, it. now I have to go look. I've got to go look yeah, for some. It's amazing. Curious. It's amazing. They're so good. It's so good. Um. All right. Uh. Okay. Give us. Um. Your weirdest fan moment. Has anybody had like a weird fan moment on you or like maybe vice weird versa? Weird fan moment. Um, uh, anybody want to go first? Uh, sure. I had a weird fan moment where I was a fan of somebody else. <laughs> and um, I, I regret it. This is one of our like pop stories that my dad will tell on a later episode. But my dad tried to introduce me to um tony williams when i was a kid when i was like probably like 13 and i was just mm -hmm. like a little punk kid that like didn't have time for my dad's friends <laughs> so my dad's like i want you i want to introduce you to somebody and i was just like no nah, i don't want to do that i was just like like messing around i was like really into like tim herb alexander like from primus yeah. <laughs> so i was just like all about that life and not trying to like meet tony williams and so tony williams was like the dopest dude he had like a cigar and he was just like a just a bad dude <laughs> my dad's like this is my son um cory he's a drummer and tony williams tried to like and i was just like i don't i was like tell my dad i don't know this fool like i didn't tell tony williams that <laughs> but i was like i don't want to meet this fool like to my dad <laughs> my dad's like do you know who that is and i'm just like i yeah and then yeah i'm like i could have met tony williams i think i did meet him and i was just like nice to meet you and like you know because yeah. i didn't want to get in trouble with my dad but but then later, my dad's like, do you know who that was? And I'm like, I don't know that fool. And like, <laughs> <laughs> Tony freaking Williams, dude. And I'm just like acting like an idiot. So that was my wow. weird, awkward fan moment with, with like that I, I had. But I yep. haven't had too many. Yeah. I've had a couple weird, awkward fan moments where people are just like, can you sign this? And it's like a weird, like, like a butt or something you know or like yeah, yeah, yeah. like i'm just like oh i'm like already awkward as it is like why are you gonna i can't do that like i don't want to do that like you know like i'm married or whatever you know uh what do you got funky phil uh nothing too i don't know i guess one that happened was uh i was playing at um it was actually at the tin roof where and they've got like the stage is right there's like a glass giant glass window um behind the stage on the street side so people walking down the street can be like almost, looking in the window yeah it's like they're right behind the band and the whole last set there's some dude some crusty dude out there like trying to get my attention i <laughs> had no idea what he wanted he was like he really really eagerly wanted something from me and then <laughs> when we finally finished he was trying to get me to fill his bong up what? Yeah, he was like, he's like, can you fill my bong with water? And what like, the heck, what? dude? <laughs> you think he's like, yeah, man, I love your drumming, but no. No, no, it had nothing to do with anything. Like, that just... beat is sick. That beat is sick. <laughs> <laughs> I need some water for my bong. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Of all things, only in San Diego. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, I don't know. Any weird ones? I mean, they give a lot of gifts. My weird, one exciting family, well, this is weird families, right? I guess one with, with uh, myself fanning out on um, Quincy Jones. Oh, my gosh. What? Who was at the Montreux Jazz Festival watching the Beastie Boys, and, I, and we all knew he was there, and it's just like that 
crazy thing where it's just like royalty, right? And you just like respect their space. And you don't want to get close. You want to, you're all right. You're doing this. And I'm doing my thing, going on stage, playing. And I run off stage and he grabs my arm. Boom. I'm like, oh, shit. Whoa. Pulls me back. He's like, you sound damn good, son. Wow. And I was like, and I was like, what? And I just like freaked out and like kind of did a hop, like as I ran off, like, <laughs> <laughs> like a yeah, hop, arm in the air. And I'm like, oh, sh-. I just like hop, like in excitement. <laughs> like Mario? I mean, really? What else <laughs> yeah, can you do? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a Super Mario hop. <laughs> Dude, what else do you do though? Like, I, that's exactly what I would have done. I, yeah, I would have done the same move. I, I ran have... back and I was like, Mark, yo, you don't even know what he said to me, <laughs> Dude. And what, what leading into like some other crazy ish would be the hang after, but that's a whole other podcast. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> R I... rated. I have a, oh my gosh, please tell me. Okay, so I already have a, a future uh, awkward fan moment when I meet Quincy Jones. I haven't, I've never met him, but yeah. when I do in the future, I'm probably going to be awkwardly going, hey, thanks, thanks a lot, man. Uh, nice to meet you. So is Rashida around? Or like, <laughs> like I love his daughter. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, my God, she's so hot. Oh, God. Um, we're gonna have to come up with a bell for that. I know. A little man. counter. I, I mentored yeah. her on every show. So does does your R rated <laughs> story have to do with her? Please tell me no. Not at all. Okay, thank God. Oh, <laughs> no thank family God. involved. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, cool. Okay. Um, here's my favorite question. Based on, well, you've never met Funky Phil, so maybe this is a hard one. I guess no. we'll just do it. Me and you. Have you ever met? You've met Fredo before, Phil, right? No. No. Okay. So, based on first impressions, the question is like. I'm meeting you for the first time. Hey, what's up, man? I'm Corey. Nice to meet you, man. And you're like, oh, what's up, Corey? I'm Fredo. Okay. First impressions. What do I think that you're into? And like, what, like, what do you do for a living? And vice versa. What do you think <laughs> I do for a living? <clears throat> so, you're asking me? So yeah. What Fredo is, or Phil? So you have to answer it about yourself. Like, what do, oh, okay. what do you think I think that you're into? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and like, what do you do uh, for a living? Oh, shit. Who is this dude? He looks kind of hard and gangsterish. <laughs> I wonder what the what the f he wants. Oh wait, he's I talking mean, about drumming. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then about me. Like, what do you? What? Do, what am I into? Like, what do I do for a living? <clears throat> and uh, what do you? <laughs> what do you do? For, oh, this dude goes to college. I go to college. <laughs> yeah, probably. I can see that. Well, you were the young enough when I first met you. Though. But are, are you saying first impressions now? Yeah, now. Or, like, we're meeting each other for the first time. What is this dude? Um, he must be part of a scooter club or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ah, I'll yeah. take that. Yeah, yeah. See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think you were a drummer. I don't know why. I would think you were, like, like a, a school bus driver or something. <laughs> <laughs> I would think you were, like, into, like, I would think that you definitely have some knowledge of like you're into some stuff. Like we can have a conversation about some deep stuff, like music wise, maybe, yeah. or maybe other stuff. I don't know. Maybe we'll like, but I feel like you are, or maybe you're like a, like a car builder. Like you build, like you put hydraulics right. on cars, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I don't know what people think of me, man. I always, I always feel like, the only places that I've ever felt like I fit in and like people aren't trying to figure me out is like in Puerto Rico or in Brazil. Like I just blend right. in until they start talking to me. I just blend in. No one's trying to figure me out. But like uh, here, I think people think I'm like, I don't know, man. Like I had some people say that like I'm a barista and like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like that could be your side hustle. That's my barista. side hustle. Yeah. Bar uh, side, uh, barista uh, on the weekends, rides with the scooter club. Yeah. <laughs> um, works at, uh, you work at Hot Topic. Oh, okay. Also. I could see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Um, or am I just bagging on you now? I'm no, no, no. I'll take it. I mean, I kind of I kind of know that. I kind of feel like that's that's my thing, like, to a certain extent. Like, I had some people be like, oh, yeah, you're the cool teacher that, like, you know, like you're yeah. you're a school teacher, but you're like the the cool one that doesn't really discipline the kids. You're just like kind of yeah. cool with them, like whatever. <laughs> Dude, my I don't. You never met Phil, but like Phil is like we always keep saying that Phil is like the guy that if you're playing like at a bar 
He's the guy that's coming in after you and he's setting up an acoustic guitar and he's playing like <laughs> a reggae version of like, let's get it on. <laughs> and he's like, Hey man, great set. You sound real good, man. Yeah. Like, and then he's like, kind of like fanning you a little bit, like fanboying you, you know, he's got a beer and, and a guitar and he's just like, he's wearing a Volcom shirt. <laughs> I don't even have a Volcom shirt. <laughs> Volcom shirt, flip flops. And just like, yeah, dude, he's just, he's doing like, See, you change the rules for me. You, you, base, you base it on an outfit I don't even wear. You're like, if Phil was wearing this, I would think that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, it's great. I like bus, I like bus driver, too. Yeah, bus driver, yeah. Bus yeah. driver's pretty good. Oh, man, I could totally see you be like a, like a, a cool bus driver, though. Like, but yeah, <laughs> full-on bus driver. Just like maybe a city bus driver. Like, like full-on. We're not allowed to talk to you. You know, but you gotta right. get the route done, dude. Like, you know, you just like, yeah, I don't know. Get in, get out. Yeah, lock yeah. the door. Yeah, it's it's the same thing. I don't know if you know Fig, but like, um, I was like, he's like a really great drummer, man. And that's like all that's all he does is just play drums. But I'm like, I don't know, man. I see you being like a hard working like city worker, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like a really like blue collar. <laughs> and he's just like, nope, that's not me. Like, you know, it's it's funny. All right, last question for Rapid Fire. Give us three things people may not know about you. Three things. Um, um, I like pea soup. Wow. But I hate peas. Weird. Whoa. <laughs> That's a yeah. good first one. That's a really good one. Uh, I'm a righty who bats lefty. Whoa. That's and cool. last one. <laughs> uh, the last one's always hard. I was, uh, I was, uh, my girl was watching like the Kardashians. Oh, I just told straight up on the podcast. I told her I wouldn't do it, <laughs> <laughs> but, but they were, they were talking about some gross stuff. And she's like, I can't believe that they talk about this stuff on reality TV. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so now I'm thinking about the grossest thing that I could think of <laughs> 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 to put on a podcast. But she told me, she thought, don't tell anybody. <laughs> oh man. You may have to, you may have to cut this out. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. Uh, let's see. Um, and the third one, um, I recently started liking vegan A's. Oh, wow. Well, that makes two of us. <laughs> nice. um, okay, so man, I always we always have to come up with new ones on this. So um, let's see. Number one for me, people may not know that uh, I secretly like some TLC reality shows. Like I'm hooked on this show called Ninety Day Fiance right now. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> wow. um number two uh let me see let me see let me see oh man i can't think of any today uh number two uh man i never have driven in a tesla until a few weeks ago <laughs> that's a really dumb one that's really dumb all right number two i've never flown flown first class first class never Ooh. Never done it. And I've always wanted to, and I'm super jealous of people in first class. I feel like they're looking at me like, ah, go to the back, <laughs> scumbag. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I hate you. Yeah. Um, all right. And then number three. Oh, this is the hard one. Um, this is the hard one. Uh, I am vegan, but I sometimes, I kind of don't care about being vegan when it comes to cake. <laughs> or sweet. Wow. If there's a cookie in front of me, they can be like, "Yeah, but it has eggs," and I'm like, "I don't care. I'm eating that cookie. <laughs> Give me that cookie." <laughs> no, good to know. All right, Funky Phil, what do you got? Oh, okay, um, I cut my own hair. Wow. Yeah, I, I just uh, <laughs> it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> good for that, you. It Funky probably Phil. explains why I look so horrible all the time. <laughs> it doesn't look bad. <laughs> uh, I ride goofy foot. On skateboards and surfboards. Wow. Me too. Are you right-handed too? I am right-handed, yeah. So wait, I think I do too. Yeah? Like goofy-footed? But I, but I push off regular-footed. That's it's really weird. Right? But then stand. Yeah, I use... So, okay, so wait, let me get this straight. Like, 
my right foot is on my board, but I kick with my left foot. But Would, then I, ri- I turn around and face, like, if I'm going forward, I'm facing to the right. So that's goofy. Right. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I kick really that, weird. <laughs> so go, go, goofy footed the other way, right? That doesn't necessarily just mean left. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm the opposite orders. way of what I am. Yeah. So I kick off. So, okay, like if, if I was riding a skateboard, the way that Which I'm... Which foot is in front? The left foot is in front. Okay, so that's not goofy then. But I kick with my left, so I kick goofy. Because your left foot should be still on the board, and then you're kicking you with You call right. that a penis pusher. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but then when I snowboard, wow. my left foot stays in the binding. And then I kick with my right foot. And that's why I always fall when I'm getting off the chairlift, because I can't figure it out. It's not like skateboarding. Now I've just figured it out. All right. Anyways, <laughs> gosh, this is not a skateboarding podcast, even though we do talk no. about it a lot. Anyways, oh, all right, man. Funky Phil. And the third, I, I guess I like over slightly overcooked pumpkin seeds. They're disgusting. They're I tried so good. one. I can't stop. They're disgusting. My wife tried to make pumpkin seeds, but burnt them. She succeeded. Thank Ooh. you, Summer. No, <laughs> they're not good. <laughs> they're not good. All right, cool, man. Um, okay, we have one more segment, but I feel like we have taken so much of your time already. Um, we have a would yeah, you rather. Yeah, way over. Um, but I think we're going to save would you rather for next time you come on, if that's cool with you. Sure. Okay. Man, this has been a really great interview for us. We really appreciate you coming on. <laughs> Right on, man. Thank Wait, I gotta get one of I gotta get one of these. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we are definitely gonna we have to schedule you again to come on. Maybe after your tour we'll catch up with, with it and um <laughs> Yes. We got a bunch of background noise going on. <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the garage. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I picture you just pumping iron though with like little tiny dumbbells. Like, <laughs> um, all right, man. Well, thank you again for coming on, and we'll have you on soon. Have a safe tour coming up, and um, we'll keep in touch. And uh, hopefully, we'll get to like shed with you sometime. Yes, for sure. Let's do this. All right, man. Thank you. Thanks well, for having me, guys. No problem. We'll yeah. talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs> Fredo Ortiz. Woo! Dude. That was a dope interview. I feel I felt kind of bad because I felt like we were kind of like fanboying him. I know I was. And like, but I mean I like I know this dude. Like he's he's like a he's a homie and he's like a friend of the drum brigade, you know? He's like one of the drum brigade dudes, I like to say. <laughs> um, but like he's play he's just got such an incredible like story and like a Dope career, man. Seriously. He's still just killing it. What a roster. Yeah. I <laughs> it's mean, crazy. We didn't even t- we talked about like two of the bands that he's played with, you know? Yeah. Like, we could talk for hours on all kinds of stuff, man. It's so dope. He's such a nice guy, so humble, so like just such a hang, like just a great hang. And like, you know, like we've done a couple travel dates together, and like it's just like he's just kicking it with everybody. He's like so easy to get along with. Like, really dope, dude. That's awesome. We're having some heavy dudes on this uh this show, Phil. For real. Man. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I think? I think we need to play percussion, dude. <laughs> like That's what I'm doing. The two percussionists that we had on have played with the craziest people. Yeah. Steve Haney with Stevie Wonder. I just want to play with Corey. <laughs> the shuffle and bang, dude. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, Phil. They're pretty <laughs> high up there. <laughs> You're reaching for the stars, bro. <laughs> uh, no, that's man. What a, <laughs> like that was a great interview, man. That was really cool. That was really good. Really yeah. good hang. Um, so, anyways, uh, man, it's been a episode twenty three. That was a long interview. Mm-hmm. We told him that we weren't going to keep him very long, and we ended up keeping him for an hour and fifteen minutes. And I still wanted to talk another hour about like tenacious d and like yeah. sepultura and like bro <laughs> we gotta have him back we'll just have him back, him back on we'll yeah. just have him back on you know that's all there we, we didn't even get into would you rather like i know so many things we could there's so many directions we could go with this guy it's like we should just have a, a podcast dedicated to fredo <laughs> <laughs> like the life of fredo dude um yeah so anyways um it's episode 23 we're farting them out. <laughs> 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 I 
we're just getting them out there, man. We're just getting them out there. We're, yes. we're putting out podcasts every week and just pff, people just love a bit of it. Love it. <laughs> Can't even get enough of it. Uh, tell your friends. Tell your friends. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Follow us. Listen to this show. Follow Phil and I. Follow the Drum Brigade. <laughs> Pass it on. Oh, yeah. Fredo Ortiz, Corey Kingston, Funky Phil Pardell. Strum Brigade Podcast, episode 23. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Drum Brigade. Drum Brigade. Yeah. Drum Brigade. Yeah. Drum Brigade. Yeah. 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 When you extend your dress code, your politics, your life, and when I read your lips, your rollish heart of mine, it's always the same old movie.